Plan B, the 2021 movie review and thoughts. So, in celebration of Women's History Month, we are examining this film today. Now, it is possible that I'm going to be talking fast during parts of this video. It's not that I'm on speed. I may or may not have taken a pill that they, he said there was a very small chance that it was PCP. I'm a little, it's, it's in and out, okay? I'm gonna start by telling you this was a piece of, this was a movie that I absolutely loved. This video will have, yeah, there will be a number of jokes. It's probably mostly gonna be me, like, yeah, talking about the, the jokes in the movie. And I will get into some serious topics. I realize this video is long. I'm, I'm going to do what I can to make it worth your time. Also, if you're only interested in the view, that part of the video is not the whole length of the video. To see the length, check the time codes in the description box. I started this video with a review where if I spoil anything, I will verbally warn before I do so and hold up an index finger. Until I'm done with the spoilers, you can mute and skip ahead until you see me lower my index finger. As soon as I end the review itself, please note, the rest of the video will have lots of spoilers, including discussing the ending. But I, you know, I'll warn before I start on the, on the spoilers. And yeah, this is rated TVMA, which is basically the equivalent of an R rating. And the, let's see. As far as language goes, I guess it's mostly discussion of crap. I, I actually, yeah, I'm not sure there was pr actual profanity in this for those bothered by such. Um, honestly, I might, I might swear in this video if that is something that bothers you. And let's see. So the yeah, and it it uses the R rating well, uh, you know. Does it go as far as some other stuff? No, but it does go far. Like if you, if you really love raunchy comedies, this one is definitely. Don't even pretend that this doesn't have raunchy stuff in it. I've, I've seen some of the negative reviews for this movie. Wow. Anyway, I have watched this once, and I literally just got done. Like. At most, like maybe three minutes passed since I finished watching this movie, so it is very fresh in my mind. And yeah, the plot. I yeah the the um the IMDb plot summary is quite good. Follows the movie follows a straight laced high school student and her slacker best friend. Let's see. Yeah, yeah, they have to hunt down a Plan B pill in America's heartland. And, yeah, um, honestly, this is, you know, I, I, I added this movie to the schedule, you know, when I saw that it was put on Disney+, Plus. seemed like something that would be interesting to talk about, I am really glad I did. This was so funny, and also really moving, like, not every single laugh was, like, in, like, gut-busting, but I... There were almost no jokes that fell flat, and like, yeah, it has a it has a good like balance. Not every single joke is trying to just completely destroy you. The the way that you know, I yeah, I would pretty much say the um, the movie Neighbors or Bad Neighbors if you're in the UK. That one is basically try. They basically edited out any jokes that didn't get a big enough reaction. So that movie is just full of jokes that are expected to just like have a really big reaction. And I find that it kind of they kind of cannibalize each other. You can't have that big of a reaction every single joke. And yeah, the the moving stuff really worked. I never felt like it, it doesn't get sappy. I never felt like the movie was just trying to make me, you know, yeah, either either trying to make me laugh or trying to make me feel without it coming from, like, an honest place. You know, this is, like, yeah, the, the values that the movie is communicating are clearly, genuinely felt by the filmmakers. This is not one of those where, 
like, oh, they, you know, they feel like we got, we, we should probably try to, you know, com communicate this value or that value. No, it legitimately just, yeah. And the, um, I've seen some people uh, call into question the, the technical aspects, D you know, yeah, to start with, clearly the people are very talented, and there's a lot of skill and enthusiasm on display here. I mean, I guess I could, if I didn't know going into it that it was, you know, not quite, not like TV movie, but made for streaming specifically, and and that like the 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 budget. No, yeah, it doesn't say. Um, yeah, and that the the budget was, you know, yeah, based on that, based on it not going to theaters. I might have been able to to tell. There are things in the movie where, like, okay, if this was a feature film, if this had been put in theaters, where like they can make a ton of profit if enough people watch it and it you know, enough people watch it more than once. I think there are maybe, a, a, you know, some, some things here that would have gone further, but the fact that they didn't wasn't, like, a detriment to the film. It, it, you know, it's a, it's a thing. You can, you can pick it up, sure, but I really wouldn't say that it ever, like... I, I was never like, oh, I've, I thought they were going to do this, and then they just did this. Okay. It, I, I was never disappointed. And, uh, right, um, some people, you know, when, when something with a high age rating is put on Disney+, Plus, some people are like, wow, how is this on Disney+, Plus? there's an age, you know, you, you, can, you can password protect your account if you, you know, if you have a shared account, and, and you know, you can create a, an account that's, you know, that, that doesn't allow for high age rated stuff and you can make that one not password protected so that if someone who has access to your you know TV or, or whatever they can use the the one that you know is is just for maybe just for ac accessible to children they cannot access this stuff as long as you put the the password on you know so yeah, the, the, nobody is accidentally going to watch this as long as you spend, you know, and it's super easy. I, I, yeah, you know, and, and if you're like a boomer or something, there are like, you can look up how, how to do it. It's super easy to, to put an age rating and, uh, yeah, to password protect age ratings on, Dis on Disney plus. So this is, uh, yeah, starting with the writing. So this is written by a duo who almost exclusively write together. This is the first and so far only feature film that they've written. I hope they make more. Uh, let's see. Yeah, and, and there are some things. Uh, you know what? I think I might actually... Yeah, that is kind of a spoiler, so I'm just going to make sure to put that in the spoiler section. There we go, and not talk about it here. So, yeah, this you know this movie came out before the overturning of Roe v. Wade, so it's com what it's commenting on has only gotten worse, you know. So it is extremely relevant. Or, you know, if you listen to conservatives, oh, it's just trying to shove politics down your throat. You know, it's not like this affects fifty percent of literally like. If you are a teenager or an adult, and you're a woman in America, this affects you. So, you know, you don't have to... Nobody, nobody's, like, forcing you to watch every single movie like this. But it, it's pretty silly to just say, oh, you know, why do they have to preach? Because there are a lot of people who don't understand it. So evidently, they need to be preached to. Now, the two writers are called Joshua Levy and... Pra Prathiksha Srinivasan, and I am not familiar with their other work. 
I guess I could just very briefly say if I see something on. Um, yeah, they uh, they also wrote for something called Bolly Weird, so I'm assuming that comments on Bollywood and yeah makes a lot of sense for the the cultural background. Um, I'm are they both okay? I, based on the name, maybe a Joshua Levy isn't, but I think I probably butchered um, this person's name and it does not state gender pronouns but uh, yeah oh yeah here we go yeah the the woman's name so I'm not good um, don't worry I'm not gonna repeat it I, I am not a repeat offender oh she has she also acted on Bolly weird and a Girl's Guide to Her Early Twenties, which they also wrote together. Oh, that's right, yeah, and also Joshua Levy directed A Girl's Guide to Her Early Twenties, Wasted and Bolly Weird, and let's see, Wasted, yeah, um, and the actress writer appeared on Wasted, but they did not write it. Right, and, and Charlotte was also written by Joshua Levy. But but yeah, so, you know, clearly, like, they want to make content that is relevant for young women and for, you know, South Asian... So, so yeah. Let's see. The... Right, and, and they also wrote for I, Zombie, which I have heard that title before, um, I mean, I, I do legitimately, so, a medical resident finds that being a zombie has its perks, which she uses to assist the police. That sounds like a kind of fun com concept. So, so yeah, I, I get why that's, yeah, I, I, let's move on. So, the, let's see. Um, yeah, uh, I, yeah, one critic said the writing had some plot and technical issues. I, I really wish they gave examples because I, I'm not entirely sure. I, actually, I think there's a, yeah, there's a, there's a plot thing that, um, yeah, I will, I will get to over the course of this video. Um, yeah, and it says uh, the 107 runtime needed to be trimmed down to at most 90 minutes. I don't know that I really felt like, for sure, there's no scene that I could like point to and be like, just get rid of that one. Yeah, I, I didn't think it was too long, but I do understand the, the you know, the, the argument would be that it is not quite like... You know, if, if you go beyond 90 minutes, it has to be something where there is, like, I can, yeah, it's an important issue. It is not necessarily an issue that needs as much, you know, not the entire movie, um, not everything that happens in the movie has very much to do with access to, you know, to, um, Crap, I forget. Reproductive health care, that's what it's called. You know, and, and an argument could be made that trimming out the things that are not directly related to that would make it, you know... But, but yeah, personally, I don't think... I'll, I'll, I'll talk more about it when I get to the... when I start talking editing, but right now I'm not sure that I would it's, trim anything out. So... Yeah, this there there are some plot twists in this movie. Uh, I'm not sure, you know, if you're like super hyped on plot twists, it doesn't have like a million of them. You know, I don't think there are too many, too or too few, and none of them really like came off to me as bad. I I acknowledge that some people did feel that some of them were bad, and it's not the kind of movie that falls apart when you learn, you know, 
once certain twists are revealed. So this is directed by Natalie Morales. Now she's known for her acting and still does act. I honestly I haven't watched my, very much of what she's acted in. This is only the second feature she directs. The first one she also wrote. I really hope. Uh, I yeah I didn't mention that with the writers. I hope these three keep. I I would very much like to watch other stuff that the duo have written, and yeah I I hope she keeps directing. Let's see. She, yeah, so she's directed some short. I don't know how to. Uh, yeah, she directed five that all start with James Joyce's love letters with. So yeah, and and a short called Lost It. Uh, so three episodes of Mr. Student Body President. Two episodes of Room One O Four. One episode of Mr. Mayor, and then this and before it, Language Lessons, also in 21. Spanish teacher and her student develop an unexpected friendship. Yeah, um, let's see, is it... I'm gonna real quick check if it is on Disney+. Plus. Ah, uh, no, no, um... If it goes to Disney Plus, I might watch it. Yeah, uh, and that one's also a comedy drama, like this one. And yeah, oh, and yeah, she acts in that one. She has the oh, it is not a very large cast. Yeah, I guess she might actually be the lead then. Yeah, I guess that is yeah that is her in the looking at her the the on IMDb. Yeah, yeah, that's that's her. On the on the thing and that one let's see is that one also ah that one appeared to go to theaters so it is not Hulu original anyway yeah yeah um I I really thought the you know really really great work here um is there any Let's see if there's something. Ah, oh, that's right. Yeah. Um, Miss Calleros in Spider-Man Into the Spider-Verse. Let's see. And what else have I seen her play? Um, oh, is that it? Oh, yeah, I guess that's actually, that might be the only thing that I've... Yeah, um... Yeah, she does a good job there. And I appreciate, you know, there's not really a role for her in this one, so I appreciate she's not one of those directors that insist being in every single movie. Looking at you, M. Knight. The, the, it's, you know, probably the biggest problem with M. Knight putting himself in every movie is that he's not particularly good of an actor. At least he wasn't last time I checked, which was glass. So... Anyway, yeah, she didn't insist that she has to appear in this one. And the, let's see. Yeah, I have been really happy with dark progressive films that are horror and or comedy of recent years. I've agreed with the messages in progressive movies and shows for many, many years, but I think in recent years the filmmakers have gotten better at making it biting, not holding back, and trying to politely ask that the right-wingers don't destroy the planet and kill us all. So, rank worst to best other than this, and I loved all of them except Antlers, which I do love aspects of. Antlers, not okay. The menu, red or not, barbarian, fresh. The night house and everything everywhere all at once. And I will update that list when I get to the very end of the review. And some... Let's see. Right, so... Raunchy teen sex comedies. I didn't put them on the the list, but I did put. Up, I don't know. They're probably not super easy to recognize if you don't know what you're looking at. But Married with Children, which is like a good solid eight out of ten, and the um, Two and a Half Men, which I put up multiple times, is the um, yeah, it's a it's a ten out of ten. It's it, the the strengths so greatly outweigh the weaknesses. I'm not saying there are no weaknesses. 
and you know it's this is probably a good time to say for sure like there's problematic material in 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 all of the shows and, and movies that and, and you know for sure like this one I feel like it it's at least on the side it's it the the values are clearly progressive but I could understand why some people might feel that you know yeah some of the things are, are pushed too far you know it, it you kind of you kind of have to with if, if you're gonna make a raunchy you know offensive kind of th you kind of have to push boundaries and I think it's important whether or not you you know where, where your empathy is placed and you very much see like this one actually has empathy for like people of color which I'm not 100% sure I've seen in another like raunchy comedy thing so worst to best all the raunchy teen sex comedies that I've watched that are movies the only ones I love are the top two I've enjoyed watching at each at least on the initial viewing again all of these do have problematic material Porky's the third one the second one then the first one Van Wilder the first one did not watch the, the second one it's Honestly, at least the second one does apparently star the, the person of color, um, so that's something. And, it, right, American Pie 2, American Pie 1, and Road Trip 1. Have not watched the second, do not intend to. And, let's see, oh, that's right, that was, that was, that was, that was the thing I was gonna do. I guess I'll do it super quick, so... One thing that I noticed about the movie Road Trip is that 25 minutes in, the road trip starts. Which, you know, you don't want to wait too long to get, yeah, to start on the road trip. And I don't think I want to give away exactly how early, but yeah, it happens very early in this one also. It's not, it's not quite 25 minutes, but it's not much later, I yeah, you know what? It's it's about thirty-two minutes in. That's you know, yeah. I already told that. I already told you that it is that it has a road trip, so it's not spoiled. Uh, yeah. So the movie Road Trip has development for all of the leads. It's not just humiliation where ridiculous stuff happened to them. There's there is some humiliation to be sure, but it's not just ah ha ha. Look at that. You know, which is that is a problem with some of these. It it's there. There are some people that they clearly hate and really just want to laugh at. And so it's, yeah, and yeah, uh, every major character gets d character development in this. Some of them you don't. It's not a huge amount of time, but they will say something or do something really meaningful, and you get a good sense of who they are based on that. And let's see, yeah, road trip will cut back and forth between the road trip and the place the road trip started. And there's also a bit of a side plot that I don't want to give away that works really well. Does this do something similar? Not really, no. This one is very focused on the, the two girls and the road trip and the, the mission at hand. And I think that works really well. I'm, I'm glad that it doesn't uh, cut back and forth. And there's also not really, you know, that one has something that there is to cut back to. This one doesn't really. So, yeah, I appreciate that. Road Trip uses editing such as smash cut gags and needle drops for humor and to keep the energy high. This one also does, this one isn't quite as high energy as, it, it's not slow paced, but it's, I'm, I'm not sure I would say it's quite as high energy as that one is. And let's see, yeah, and I, I noted, you know, since Road Trip, you know, the, the, yeah, there's 21 years between these two movies, so Plan B should be able to top Road Trip, and it does. And let's see, uh, right, yeah, uh, okay, you know what, I, I can, sometimes I really take critics to task, Honestly, when they're right, they're right. And there's this, yeah, this this one person, he gave it a 1 out of 10, which, honestly, fair. Tried watching this movie, but within five minutes, it was pushing the LGBTQ++ agenda. I am done with this crap. I mean, holy crap. Just, wow. 
How dare they advocate for being treated with humanity? After all, they do things with their body that nobody is, is hurt by, but it's different from straight cis people that just... Yeah, I'm being sarcastic. And let's see. Uh, right, yeah, this. The, the, yeah, here we go. Um, the movie's cute, and the acting is good. That's one thing. I don't. Th I'm not sure. I found a single review where they claimed that at the very least the two leads are not like really great together. Like they have great chemistry, and they seem like yeah, they feel like they they feel like their characters. You don't like I. I always have to remind myself, this is, these are just actors. They're, in real life, they might be completely different, but just, yeah. But, yeah. But, is there not another pharmacy close by? Do you not watch the news? Republicans have spent decades limiting access to reproductive health care. I mean, the, the, yeah, fairly early in this, the, the, they go to a pharmacy, and the the basically yeah they they ask to buy a plan b pill and the the uh, yeah the the clerk you know says if you're not 18 yet you know i'm i i have a conscientious objection to it and that's state law and yeah like honestly so you know, so they leave there not having, not having been denied buying this pill, and I feel like they would probably. It seems to me that what the two girls assume is, the other pharmacies in the the state, are probably also going to deny them, you know, so the the, yeah, uh, some some people really hate that they didn't just. That we we do we see them try that one pharmacy and then they choose a different approach after that. I mean, I guess maybe they could have had like a a um, like a, a Darren Aronofsky hip hop montage you know, cutting to, to a bunch of different pharmacies where they're also turned down, but, and, and, yeah, it might be a, a budget thing, like, I could, I could see how maybe the, the, you know, maybe at some point that was in the script, and they were like, you know what, they're gonna, they're gonna say it's gonna cost too much money, let's, let's remove it, you know, or maybe it never was there, but, yeah, the, the, I don't think that it's bad about the movie that we only see them get turned down at one pharmacy. These are also teenagers. Um, teenagers don't always make the best choices, you know. And and to be fair, like you know, to err is human. Now let's see. So the uh, it, right, yeah, some other critical quotes. Plan B shows us that the war over women's reproductive rights doesn't have a single sweeping battlefield. It is a cold war in which one group gradually takes away women's agency and limits the decisions they can make about their bodies. Very true. Let's see, and, um, yeah, I gotta say, I, I hadn't even heard of, of the other ones, but apparently... The pair of teen girls go on a road trip to ob obtain an abortion or birth control is now a subgenre unto itself, so we must rely on the wit of the screenplay and the charm of the leads to get us by. Luckily, both are great here. Absolutely true. Yeah, apparently, I've, I've heard of at least one other, I think it was called Unpregnant, but, like, the two movies, let's see, just to make sure. Unpregnant came out 2020. So the the um, Haley Lou Richardson she was great and split. Honestly, I I wouldn't rule out. Maybe I will watch this one at at some point. Let's see. And yeah, based on the poster, it does seem like that's also one like. One overachiever and one slacker were friends, both going on. 
yeah, so so the yeah, some people were upset that these two movies came out, you know, not a huge amount of time be passing between that one. As far as I can tell, both of the girls are white, so that's a reason to you know the right. Yeah, I um this one the. Yeah, this stars Sonny, who is, I I really hope I'm not getting this wrong, South Asian, I believe, is the, is the term. Certainly, we are, are in Indian, crap, I, I'm terrible at geography, I, I, honestly, I mean absolutely no disrespect, but I've always been terrible at geography. I absolutely don't think that anybody who is not lily white as I am, you know, everybody deserves equal rights, regardless of what, you know, the the color of your skin or the the religion or anything like that. Um, but, but yeah, that's one of our leads. The other is Latina. So, you know, yeah, more, more diversity, more representation is better. I don't know if the entire movie is better, but that is a good place to start, you know, to make sure. And, and this is very informed by their uh, backgrounds. Uh, you know, every, like, if you tried to, like, remake this movie with two white girls, you would have to change so much. Like, there's very little of the movie that you wouldn't have to completely change. So, you know, yeah. And the, the, yeah, I mean, as long as it's such a big issue, I think it's right to keep making movies, and just Road Trip is a good way to do a teen movie that, like, you know, the, the, um, it allows for, for bonding between the people on the road trip. It means that they can be away from stuff like parents and other family. You know, it's it's a good way to do, yeah, this kind of thing. With honest, empathetic storytelling and endearing performances from a talented young cast, Plan B is a raucous coming-of-age road trip adventure that has tremendous energy and a massive heart. An authentic representation of being a young woman in this society, it advocates for female reproductive rights in a contemporary manner. It's funny, moving, and highlights various themes like friendship, self-acceptance, and familial relationship. The characters are complex, the story engaging, and the trip is like the road trip from hell sans... sans stalky serial killer. While Sonny and Lupe may have their typical teen girl insecurities, they, uh, let's see, yeah, they're for the most part cheerful, relatable characters who use modern buzzwords they don't totally understand to try to make sense of a world to which they're still trying to adapt, which I think I'm going to, uh, yeah, there's a, very early in this, someone, yeah, one, one of the two girls says, is this what white privilege feels like? And I'm not sure that... I think it might just be supposed to be that, like... I think she's... It, it's the... the we're, we're supposed to find it funny that she's... You know, we're, we're not, like, thinking she's, she's stupid or something, but she is, like, misusing that, that word. You know, and as, as someone with white privilege, I try to check it. I... Yeah, I, I really don't think that the thing she's, I don't think the word white, the, the term white privilege makes sense for the, the situation, but yeah, I think that is like, I mean, I guess maybe it's saying that she legitimately just can't imagine what white privilege, yeah, yeah, that's, or... Yeah, that's. I think that is what the what the joke is supposed to be. Let's see, you know, I I agree with those who say that the word is being used wrong, but I think that is the joke, and as such, I think the the joke is is pretty good. You know, some some people, 
apparently didn't take it that way. They thought, oh, here we go, you have to say white privilege. I really don't think that was what it was. I, I agree. I'm not saying that that never happens. I have not watched Velma. I don't like watching stuff that's apparently not very good. And I'd like the con conservatives who hate that to note. If it, tell you what, if you if you write if if you're a conservative watching this video right now, if you have seen someone who self-identifies as progressive actually speak positively about the show, please put the link in the description in the comments. Post that in the comments. I am willing to, you know, I I will watch, and if I, you know, yeah, maybe, maybe, maybe someone progressive has said something positive about it, but I've never seen it. I have not seen a single progressive person say a single positive thing about it. So, you know, but, but yeah, I will acknowledge, like, based on the trailer, based on what I've heard people say about it, that one doesn't seem like it's actually making jokes so much as it just, like, presents something that is, like, you know, at, at least some of which is progressive. So, you know, the Velma is lesbian and a person of color. You know, that is progressive, but that in itself is not a joke. You know, the, the, I, I, you know, certainly some conservatives think that the existence of non white, non straight people is inherently a joke, but progressives don't. So I did, you know, but yeah, if, if, you know, the, also, if, if I've been misled, like, if you, if you've watched Velma and you're like, this is amazing, honestly, please, uh, you know, I'm, I'm open to that. It's, it's entirely possible that the people I have heard talk about it, you know, either didn't watch enough of it to, to understand. Because, I don't know, maybe it's just the trailer and the clips people have seen that are bad. That's also possible. Anyway, back to critic quotes. Fans of Booksmart, Blockers, and Unpregnant will find much to like here, but while the movie touches each of those films in some way, it also crafts a voice and narrative of its own. Director Natalie Morales shapes Plan B's subtle politics into a badge of pride in a film that is funny, smart, and willing to get comfortably uncomfortable with its complicated subjects. Like Booksmart, it's front and center to teenage girls. Good, largely funny, and pacey with lots of heart. There's five good jokes in the credit sequence alone. Along the way, a friendship is tested, secrets are revealed, and a sweet touch, unusual for the... Uh, the, the... I think I will... put that in the spoiler section, because that next thing... I would consider a spoiler. While its tone is radically different from that of Never Rarely, Plan B has its political points to make without ever feeling like a smug lecture, absolutely. Plan B is a bit of an odd duck in that it has such clear intent to buck the light-hearted conventions of the genre, um, yet adheres to so many of those same conventions throughout. I mean, I think an argument could be made. Yeah, yeah, that is... that is. Uh, there's some truth to that. It was funny with great performances, smart writing, and whip-smart direction by Natalie Morales. See, the thing is, sometimes there's, like, really hateful people who use big words to try to make it seem like they aren't just being racist. But, so, so you know, you gotta, you gotta be careful not to just say that you agree with something because it sounds like the person was actually thinking when they wrote it, because... They might not have. They might have just been using big words without... Yeah. Let's see. Um, the movie does take seriously the issue of barriers to access of contraception and re reproductive care. It's joked about, but it's not played as a joke. Absolutely true. Let's see. Directed by actor Natalie Morales. 
The edgy nature of the material shouldn't overshadow the stellar performances and timely window into efforts to curb women's reproductive rights. Plan B has plenty of fun and heart to offer, and while doing so, it never once treats the serious subject it addresses as a laughing matter. A winning teen comedy with star-making performances from its two leads is... Let's see... Okay, so this person says it's disjointed. I agree that there are... There's definitely... It's, it's episodic. I would not use the word disjointed. And yeah, this person also thinks it's it's too long. I, I disagree. The endeavor captures adolescent concerns quite accurately, at times creating its finest moments when it merges horror and heartache. Yeah. What elevates Plan B to a higher plane is its intelligence, willingness to make people uncomfortable, and enabling the characters to be funny without humiliating them in the process. And let's see the... Okay, so I I really don't I don't know if this person I'm going to try I I I don't like to call into question someone's honesty or integrity when I read a review that appears to not be that but I gotta say, like, it feels like this person wrote the review, uh, wrote this blurb before watching the movie and then didn't change it. So I'm gonna go ahead and read it and say I disagree with it. Plan B does the topic a disservice by not making the point about the lack of reproductive rights many people within America have. It's a relief it's not a PSA about safe sex and abortions, but ignoring the weight of the topic feels a little disrespectful. I would love, like, if the, um, I'm gonna, I'm gonna do a really quick, let's see if I can find the, okay, so that, yeah, that was Screen Queens reviewer Amelia Harvey, the, the, um, I think I'm gonna, I'm gonna try to read I like when I when I read that before watching the movie, I was like, oh, that's too bad, but I guess it um I am trying to figure out if I should maybe uh No, I think what I'm gonna do is I'm going to once I've um after I've done this video, I am going to um, maybe I could just real quick. Okay, so let's see if the. I mean, it's not probably not that long. Yeah. Okay, I'm gonna really quick skim the the. Um, okay, so this. Yeah, she certainly the review isn't all bad because she points out it is. You know, it's the typical Teen Quest movie in the tradition of Superbad, but with a modern feminist twist. I'm really glad, that, you know, some people are afraid of the word feminist. This is clearly a feminist movie, and saying that it's just, oh, it's just Superbad, but they're women, that's not quite, you know. It, yeah, it, there, there are some, it, in some ways it resembles Superbad, from what I've heard, but it is not just gender swapped. It has actual feminist values. Now, let's see. Mm. So the. Okay, I guess this is. It never gets lost in the political aspect of two girls seeking the Plan B pill. In some ways, that is beneficial to the story, in some ways, it makes. In other ways, it makes it very stereotypical. Ultimately, the pair could be on a quest for anything. And then the, the quote that I read before about doing the topic a disservice. Okay, uh, honestly, I don't agree that it needed more of a focus on it. I think they probably were worried about being able to sell the script as it was. I... Uh, I'm going to acknowledge, obviously, you know, as a cis man, I've never been pregnant. I've never been afraid of becoming pregnant. So I will acknowledge I can't completely, you know, I can I can 
try to empathize, but I'll never completely understand it. And I don't know, I guess... You know what, I... I and, and obviously she's completely entitled to her opinion. I'm not saying, you know... Um, yeah, the the... It says here she's especially interested in LGBTQ culture and let's see freelance writer frustrated novelist occasional wrangling of international students so so yeah you know she is the the um, she has perspective she's not some uh, yeah um let's see and Right, and the, uh, yeah, she points out there's something really uncom- actually, yeah, I'm going to, let's see, um, yeah, I'm, I have some, some quotes that I will get into when I, when I talk spoilers, because she does make some really good points in her review. Um, I think the reason that it's not more focused on the, the Plan B pill is that they were worried that the, you know, it would be seen as too... Uh, yeah. So the, the um, you know, it's already very difficult to get something actually progressive made you know there there will sometimes be some progressive values but a lot of movies support the the status quo so yeah not progressive the the um i she does make some good points um Yeah, you know what? Um, she won me over. It, it, that's a fair point. Yeah. Um, you know what? I'm I'm putting a link to her review in the description box because it's she does argue her points very well. That is a a really really good point. And yeah, absolutely. And and obviously, like as a straight white guy. Whether or not I like it is not as important as whether or not someone, you know, who could actually become pregnant. And, ah, uh, oh crap, I, I closed it now. But I think she might also have been and um, live, living in America. So, yeah, uh, you know, she is, that. that's how, you know, it's more important whether someone like her likes it then you know certainly any anyone who lives even if it's not america anyone who lives in some patriarchal country where men are legislating over women's bodies without like you know what if you legitimately think that it is a problem for people to have premarital sex or you know request a plan b pill before they're of age all we progressives are asking is that you make it equal for the genders. If women have to be put through this, so do we men. That's because I guarantee the moment that one of these laws affect young men, there will be hell to pay and even more hell to pay than Donald Trump's hair you are gonna see such frustration and those laws will immediately have to be changed and oh I think I just cracked the case of why legislators are not doing that that and of course this ridiculous regressive notion that you know the the it, it, this whole thing of like it's up to women to control the the sexual you know it you don't 
men don't, you know, men are just being seduced, and they can't make decisions, you know, obviously everyone has to consent to sex, but it's ridiculous to put so much of the weight on the, you know, yeah, to make it, make it seem like if a man and a woman have sex, 100% certain the woman wanted it, and the man was basically tricked into it, just, yeah, disgusting. And let's see, right, back to critic quotes. Honestly, might be the funniest movie I've seen in years, and I'm pretty hard to please. It's like a woman's version of Superbad, but ten times as funny and more original. Thank you. Let's see. Yeah, um, I think, no, yeah, the, the sex scene itself is so anticlimactic, and the entire movie is spent dealing with the aftermath of the sex. So yeah, that I, it's such a great point. And and just yeah. And that's something you know, I guess I don't wanna that's technically a spoiler. So I'll just say one of the movies I mentioned earlier as an excellent recent dark progressive movie, at least one of those also points out that, you know, it's it's often women who are left with the consequences. And before you say, oh but well in that case we should limit women's rights in order to control it. No, we should just fun, just better sex education, actually making a lot of these products very, very cheap or even free. Like, the, it, it, the, the, um, there are solutions. And for sure, like, unplanned pregnancy, that is something that there needs to be, you know, there, there are, if everyone just runs around getting, you know, ah, crap. I also, it's difficult because there are so many, I gotta make sure to not accidentally say something that sounds like I agree with one of these chuds that, obviously, it is important that not every single time a man and a woman have sex, it is necessarily going to lead to a pregnancy if they cannot afford to have the baby. But you don't fix that by making it extremely difficult to deal with the pregnancy. You know, you fix it with proper sex ed and very easy access to contraception, you know... There are not very many people who are like completely ref just refuse to to make sure that they don't become pregnant or catch an STD or something. If you inform people and you actually make the product available. Looking forward to seeing these two actresses again, and will watch anything the writers write. Yeah, I, I second that. And he also has a really great quote that I'm going to put in spoilers. There we go. Very fresh take on good old coming of age. Plan B is a delightful film that manages to make you laugh and also think just a little bit. It has an innate charm that is helped by two very good lead performances. Best friends Sonny and Lupe attend high school in South Dakota. This... how much did I copy in? Um... Let's see... Um... Yeah, they plan a road trip. As you might guess, nothing goes right on the road trip. So. We get entwined in a funny road trip movie combined with some nuanced social commentary on how women's bodies are policed. It's a very winning film thanks to great performances from Kuhu Verma and Victoria Morales, who are play our two leads. They are very engaging, as is this very well-made film. Very well put. Let's see. Great... Uh, Loved it. Great authentic characters were very well written. The timing was really good. It never felt rushed or overly dramatic, despite the quest motif. Definitely a gem. This movie was a very realistic representation of the unbalanced burden women carry surrounding reproductive health. That was what I was tripping over expressing before. Yes, exactly. 
The two main characters are more complex than expected, and at the end of this funny ride, you will end up caring for them. And let's see... This person says the the um, some of the some some moments are low brow stock laughs that felt heavy handed. Let's see. And yeah, and this person also says uh, there's one major plot hole, and I'm thinking that's the the access to Plan B pill that I addressed earlier. Um, so, uh, you know, maybe some of them are, uh, in, in the spoiler section, in the first spoiler section, I will go over any, any joke that I felt is worth commenting, any, yes, and then I'll, uh, yeah, I'll, I'll try to, try to judge if I, if I agree that some of them were low-brow shock laughs that feel heavy-handed. I'm gonna go ahead and put that in the spoiler section as well. And... Plan B is incredibly solid indie with timely themes, great takeaways, and a few laughs. Yeah, I thought there were more than a few, but anyway. Um, let's see... It's cool to see a movie highlight a nearly never spoken about part of the country, even if it's being highlighted for how negatively it can impact women's lives. In terms of entertainment as awareness, Plan B does it right. Uh, let's see, I'm gonna go ahead and copy that. There we go, yeah. It doesn't hit you over the head with it like you're a dummy, it just presents a story that has and will continue to happen. And, yeah, that's the, the, um, I am going to make sure to copy that into the, into, I might use that in future reviews. Let's see, this person gave it 84%, led by charming and sharp performances, Plan B is another strong female-led sex comedy that flips the genre on its head and keeps the laughs coming. Let's see. Um, loved it. A refreshing take on the BFF road trip. A breakout performance from both lead actresses and the director. And a cute and fun film. Let's see. The two leads have realistic chemistry. Well directed. Let's see. And. Yeah, some other people really have. This one was laugh out loud funny. Thank you. Finally, someone said it. The chemistry of our two leads made their friendship together very believable, combined with an expertly crafted script and Natalie Morales' expert directing. This movie is definitely a must watch. The fact some some people seem to think that it's bad that some people who act also direct, especially if they started out acting. The thing you have to remember is, like, maybe, maybe if you act, maybe, maybe if you're not acting in a film, and then you start directing films, even though you're used to stage plays or something, which is, it requires tech, it requires talent to act in those, but the thing I'm getting at is, if you are a film actor, you can absorb a lot of what the directors do, and why they do it, and how they do it, you can learn a lot from there. Uh, film really is a collaborative effort. Uh, and, yeah, the, the it's very clear that she learned. For, you know, it was a learning experience. She... Uh, this does not feel like the second thing, the second feature-length thing that she's directed. This feels much more assured than that. And... Let's see. Okay, that's okay. Um, I that's uh, 
I'm I want to comment on that review, but I cannot do so without spoiling. So I am putting it there. We go. It is in the spoiler section. Unique main characters. I think there are a good amount of funny moments in the movie and some fair insights into certain laws and certain states. The movie's mostly entertaining. Wraps up. Let's see. It's, uh, Something I personally appreciate is how this movie features some Indian American representation that I would love to see more of as the years come. Absolutely agreed. Like, I, I've never, I, I don't know anyone, you know, Indian in, in real life. I've, I have met some, you know, not, not absolutely everyone. I mean, I have, I do know some immigrants. Uh, most of the immigrants I've met were um, uh, Muslims from the Middle East who, you know, came here to, to, you know, yeah, the, the, I really am not going to get into the, the, there are, there are reasons for it, but all of them are, are, you know, all of the ones that I've met were really, really kind, loving people, you know, um, before my father retired, you know, some, some of his teaching years were spent teaching, you know, yeah, teaching language to immigrants. So, yeah, and and you know some of his students, you know, would end up being invited to our home. And yeah, when I, when I was a, a kid, some of them would like babysit. And yeah, just really really nice people. You know, I'm not gonna claim that every single you know Muslim immigrant is like a perfect person. But I've, like, if I had to go, like, percentage-wise, I would definitely say I've met way more jerks. Yeah, yeah percentage-wise, when I, the, 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 a larger percentage of the white people who were born in, yeah, I'm dancing around it, Denmark. I'm, you know, born, raised, live in Denmark the the percentage of you know no i have not met as many muslim immigrants as i've met you know people who you know were are you know i mean it's people who who moved to denmark for you know for, yeah more generations ago i haven't you know i'm I haven't, it's it's not the same number, but if you look at percentages, more, as a larger percentage of the white Danes that I've met were jerks than of the Muslim immigrants were. And, and that's not to say, you know, I'm, I don't, I don't hate Denmark, I don't hate people who look like me, but there is a, you know, People who, who come from another country, you know, some of them are just so grateful to be in the in the country that the you know that it makes them better people and and yeah, frankly, some of the people I've met that were born and raised here, they feel like wow, I I wish I I wish it was a different country that I was born and raised in, and you know, some of them get resentful and they take the resentment out on other people. Now, let's see. Um, right, back to credit quotes. I would say the movie tries to capture a similar tone to Booksmart, and while it doesn't reach the same highs as that film, it's nice to see more emphasis on female characters. I haven't watched Booksmart. The, the trailer did look good to me. Um, you know, I, I um, you know, instead of continuing to go to Disney+, Plus, started using Plex, which is you know, um, that's a place you can actually look up across, uh, hold on, I, that's not the right one. So, it's not Plex, it's the, it's Just Watch. That one allows you to look across the different things you have access to. Let's see, it is... Okay, so currently, uh, oh, huh, yeah, 
I I do have access to it. Yes, uh, my my library has the. Okay, I I can't promise it right now, but I will do research. I will see if it's. You know, I, f I feel like I heard that it was well received, but I'm I'm not gonna force you to sit through that right now. Okay, yeah, uh, I will. What was the other one? Unpregnant is. I do not currently have access to that one and then there was the uh, crap or was that I guess not, maybe that was those were the the two but but yeah um, there we go and yes overall this is an entertaining movie that makes fair points and features two main characters with believable chemistry and let's see Wow, I copied in a lot. Uh, I forgot I copied in this much. Um, okay, so the okay, I'm gonna, I'm gonna. Let's see. Plan B is a form. Uh, wow, it's a teen sex comedy with a big heart and fair amount of laughs. It has two charismatic newcomers in the leads with a great deal of chemistry. Kuhu Verma plays the straight A Indian American scene Sunny, who's trying to balance the facade of good Indian girl who doesn't want to disappoint her strict mother, and be in the good grace. Um, yeah, I don't think I want to give that one away. While Victoria Morales plays her slacker Latina best friend Lupe, who's having trouble connecting with her pastor father after the passing of her mother. It follows them going through all sorts of shenanigans. After Sunny discovers she needs the morning after pill, which is not easy to obtain in conservative South Dakota. Plan B tackles the same social issue as last year's never that was one. Never rarely, sometimes always, which I don't currently have access to. But with book smart sensibility, the film is not very raunchy except for one memorable scene, which was very shocking, but very funny. Let's see. Other than that, the film is about the bond of two friends who love and care for each other and how it goes through highs and lows of a rough night. The film is very sweet, really, and it is not very dark despite the seemingly dangerous situation that these two young women go through in one eventful night. Let's see. Oh, that's right. Yeah, Olivia Wilde directed Booksmart. Yeah, that makes me want to watch, again, just, you know, learnt from being an, an actress. Learnt from being that close to the... Because, you know, basically, like, a lot of actors will work fairly directly with the director. And let's see... Um, yeah, the, the script is unafraid to be sentimental and wildly inappropriate, often at the same time. And... Let's see... Um... Right, the, the, um... The pharmacist, J. Trantasekar, from Super Troopers cameos as the the pharmacist and yeah uh, I'd like to to see other stuff that he's in and it's like if he he almost definitely in real life does not agree with the the character or he would probably not be in this movie so I I really admire when someone is willing to you know, perform a character where they say say or do something really offensive if it is in the service of getting people to, to you know, yeah, the, the, to, to change their mind. You know, back, back when I still did, like, pure, you know, videos that were basically skits and satire, you know, I, I... Yeah, I like to think I helped shake some fence sitters to take a, a position. You know, honestly, I almost feel like even if you legitimately are on the wrong side of an issue, 
don't be a fence sitter. Just don't, don't, like, educate yourself about the topic, figure out where you stand on it, and then advocate. You know, don't just sit on the fence and say, I mean, I guess it technically doesn't, you know, I'm not personally affected by it, or, or something like, just, yeah. And uh, oh, Rachel Dretch is also a let's see, yeah, um, yeah. She plays a, a health teacher, not ready for how smart her students are. And let's see, uh, yeah, I don't really want to spoil that, but yeah, she she's she's great. She's very very funny. And the um. um yeah, I, I, there we go. The best teen movies leave us wishing that we could spend more time with their characters. I can honestly say that I'd love to see where else Lupe and Sonny's lives will go. I don't usually, uh, uh, usually I don't want a sequel to a, to a movie that can stand alone. And this movie definitely can stand alone. I would watch, if, if like, if enough people want another movie, you know, I would hope that it's the same actors, same writers, and same director. I could definitely see, you could definitely make another about these and not have it just be like, oh, the same thing again. You know, maybe that one shouldn't be like a road trip and like, you know, I would hope that it didn't just re redo growth that is in this but there's definitely places to go with it so but you know it's the movie does end conclusively it does uh, you know every, everything is addressed by the end of it it's not one of those where it's just like wow i guess you really hope you get a sequel because this is not an ending it's, yeah that's not this let's see there were more uproarious ah, laughs, I'm guessing, and moments of genuine feeling in this than anything else I've seen in years. It's not for everyone. It certainly does not shy away from frank sexual discussion. But for those with an open mind and a love of ribald humor, it's a winner. One of the best movies I've seen in a while, Honest and Raw, in his portrayal of the struggles of teenagers and their relationships with their parents while also being wildly hilarious. I laughed, I cried, and I wished I could watch it again for the first time. Honestly, yeah, this, there were, there were times where I, you know, yeah, yeah, there were a couple of times where I almost cried in this, and, you know, um, I try not to cry during movies since I appear on camera so soon after, and I, I am currently of the opinion that the, the, um, There we go. I try not to cry during movies since I appear on camera so, so soon after watching, and I believe it would be distracting to viewers if it had been very clear that I had recently cried. You know, to be clear, there's absolutely nothing wrong with crying. I'm not saying I never cry. Let's see. And, f you know, for sure, if this or any other or none at all movies did or didn't, for that matter, make you cry, you shouldn't feel bad about it. Crying is healthy and normal. Let's see. Actually, I, th I think we have way too much of a fear of crying in, in our culture, and, like, I get that, you know, if a, if, a, if an infant is crying, that means you have to, you know, that there's some need that is not being met. But it's, you know, there, as we, we got to get better at, at not feeling bad about crying, you know, like, you know, maybe don't... You know, it's it's maybe not great to cry in a in a really public place or something, but like the the yeah, I'm I'm not judging anyone. Let's see. This was such a gem of a coming of age movie. I'm so happy to see the main characters are both uh, WOC, I, I guess women of the color, and show real world issues that young women face, especially in the rural US. I really like that this didn't feel totally predictable and it was directed really nicely. 
and let's see. Um, okay, so yeah, this person says, my immediate impression was book smart for immigrants. Yeah. Um, I again, I haven't watched Book Smart yet, but based on what I what I hear, that does sound like yeah. This movie, though, has so much more unexpected, unlucky events that are hilarious. The foundation of this movie is based on the importance of Planned Parenthood. Um. Huh. Okay. I. I am going to comment on the thing I just read in the spoiler section. So there we go. Gets female perspective and cultural one due to writers. And let's see. pointed as the message of Plan B is nothing supersedes just letting these two characters, traditionally bit players, at best in high school comedies, be themselves. That is so true. And yeah, there are so many. Um, yeah, honestly, I think there's probably, I'm, I, I'm not going to sit here and go over every single one, but I mentioned a bunch of raunchy teen sex comedy movies I've watched, you know, earlier in this video. And honestly, if I sat down and went over each of them, there's probably at least one of the two of those characters and they would be bit players, and there probably wouldn't be a lot of empathy towards them. They're a pair of the most authentic 17-year-olds lately seen in the movies, something owed very diff definitely to the two stars in the making, in Verma and Morales. They stick together even when things get too crazy to believe, each ready to take a bullet for the other if necessary. Their comedic timing is only outdone by their authentic heartfelt terror about the unknown. Never let your fear of what others might think outweigh the fear of letting it dictate who you become. The, the movie doesn't make a joke out of Sonny and Lupe's concerns about pregnancy, dating, and parental expe expectations, and in turn, it's a delight to laugh through their goofier exploits. In school, the pals deal with an average amount of adolescent humiliation and bullying. I, I uh, you know, I thought they did a, a good job of exploring that in a way that has empathy for the the situation. There's so many of the... I don't know why some people feel it's necessary to make, like, one movie after another that's for children or teenagers where we're supposed to laugh at someone being bullied. Like, sometimes it's even the lead bullying someone, and we're supposed to laugh because, oh, it's the per the person being bullied. There's something about them that makes us not empathize so much with them. Just, you know, don't, don't bully. Let's see. Um... Uh... Okay, yeah, this is the second movie I've watched that pairs a teenage road trip comedy with reproductive health, and I have mixed feelings. These things really shouldn't go together, like peanut butter and jelly, or cardboard boxes and cats. Emergency contraception and abortion should be easy, easily and locally available to all teens and adults who need them. No tenacious trekking required, but of course, that's not the case for a lot of people in the United States right now, and Plan B does a great job of using all the goofy, humorous tropes of road trip comedy to lay bare the painful truth about the desperate measures required to access basic reproductive health care. Sunny being an Indian and Lupe a Mexican paves way for multicultural leading characters in a story. In most cliche Hollywood films, Asian characters are employed as background or sub characters, and thus in this perspective, Plan B stands out. Let's see. Um, when they talk, Lupe and Sonny pepper their conversation with phrases like doggy style and reverse cowgirl without being entirely sure what they mean. They talk like guys in movies like this usually talk, all mouth and no trousers, to use the British phrase. And... Wow, I copied in a lot. Um, okay, you know what? I am going to 
go ahead and skim so let's see um Okay, so this person says that um, graciously Plan B isn't as obtuse as it could have been in regards to his obvious socio-political commentary, although there are a few politically correct or strawman racial jokes that land with a thud. A fellow student, for instance, remarks with surprise that one of the girls' homes doesn't smell like curry. I mean that's a thing that happens. No, I I didn't th like I you know. I d I didn't find it funny that the guy said that because that's fucked up to say. But immediately after, Sonny is like, "I'm sorry to disappoint you." That made me laugh. You know that's that's a that's a healthy way to respond to that. Well, I'm not, you know, I'm not saying that you have to have that kind of response to that. I would totally understand being furious at them but yeah uh, let's see and uh, you know what I think yeah this is the guy who didn't like the the white privilege joke which again I, I think is misunderstood but you know who knows maybe I'm the one misunderstanding it and he does say, fortunately, most of the comedy is better than that. And let's see. Yeah, and he points out, you know, the the um, it's kind of ridiculous when a movie like this isn't R or TVMA rated. You know, not every movie for teens has to be, but if you're going to tackle teen sexuality... It's kind of ridiculous not to, you know. And let's see. Okay, and this person says that the the filmmaking is more impressive in Booksmart. I could imagine. And. Um, okay. Yeah, I got a, uh, yeah. Want to comment on it? It's a, it's a spoiler. There we go. Um, um, Oh, okay, that is... There we go. Um... And... Okay, that, yeah, I, I, uh, wow. Wow. But that's definitely something, yeah, I, I'm going to comment on that when I get into the spoilers, because, wow. Ah, uh, let's see. Yeah, and and um, this person says that the um, why was race such a big factor? It turned what could have been a nice follow-up to Blockers into a story that was confused if it was raunchy comedy or something much bigger and never settled in. I completely disagree. I I don't know what this person was expecting. Um, I mean, there's no like big revolution about the the race. I, I maybe that was that's what she she means. Like people who aren't white live in America. They have to make do, and that's based. You know, we we see that there are things they have to respond to, and and such. It's not really, yeah. Um, but the, the person does say, you know, the, the film 
did a good job portraying some of our conservative laws and that you know they um yeah they live in south dakota so that's yeah um let's see um i think that is yeah that's also too much of a spoiler so i'm putting that in that section um I thought this movie was great. It was entertaining, upbeat, all about life, full of hope and refreshing. I laughed out loud and cried a few times. With that being said, I'm a 68-year-old male with grown kids and two small grandchildren. It reminded me of being in high school myself 50 years ago. All the struggles, the changes, the insecurities, the life situations one can get into at that age, or heck, any age for that matter. Let's see. Yeah. Um... So I don't even, oh wow, this person uses the term degenerate filth. Um, I don't, I don't think I'm going to go ahead and unpack. Um, so, so yeah, you know, basically, um, um, moralizing prick, basically. There is nothing in this. That's also a thing, like, if you, uh, I shouldn't be giving advice on how to, I'm not giving advice on how to sneak your conservative politics past progressives, but I do just want to say, if you don't want to look like a regressive asshole, maybe don't use the term degenerate filth. The, the word degenerate is like, that's really not a, um, yeah, that really makes you seem... Just yeah, and and then the person says disgustingly boring. They they go on to say a horrible image to give to young viewers. So it it is at least in part about like, I don't know. I just I, f I find it fascinating that the the their one line summary is degenerate filth, and then the first thing they call disgusting is uh, how boring they found it. That's that's fascinating to me. That that's. Yeah, and then this, there's a person here who said, this looks nothing like South Dakota. I live in South Dakota. Things are not as bad as this movie makes it seem. I'm pro-choice and so are all of my friends and family. We've never been belittled or anything of that nature. Then you're lucky. Like, you, you get that this is about the laws, right? Like, the movie... The, the person who says that they're not going to give Plan B pill to a 17 year old is doing so like it's specifically legal like the thing that's underlined is you might you know if, if you try to walk in and buy a plan b pill and you're not of age they might turn you down and and he even and they did such a great job on this he he like right after he says it really helps me sleep at night and just wow dude that just yeah I'm sure your your dreams are a wash of positive images of unwanted pregnancy. That's that's wonderful for you. But but yeah, it's not about like oh everyone in South Dakota is awful. It's about this law is awful and it empowers awful people to to like why would you want someone who wants a plan B pill to not receive it? Like, just, yeah. Like, I, I could, I have an easier time understanding abortion, though, you know, if you, if you educate yourself, you're going to find that, like, it's already, you know, it's been illegal for a while to perform a late-term abortion. That's when you could talk about, oh, the fetus is viable. You know, it, you know, there is, like, it could survive outside of the mother's womb. At that point, yeah, okay, then we can talk about, you know, that's, that's... But other than that, 
saying that abortion is murder is just wrong, like literally factually incorrect, even if you weren't like, even if you don't realize how bad the ethics are. Uh, and then the person said, it, yeah, the movie makes South Dakota residents seem so unlikable. You mean except for all the ones that are very likable? This movie has plenty of characters that are likable. Like, I, I don't... It's baffling to me, all the people who are like, there's no one likable in this, and then you can point, well, there's that, and that, and that. Like, what it boils down to is, they saw someone that they don't want people to think is unlikable. Like, yeah, the, the hardcore conservative, some of the hardcore conservative characters in the movie are not very likable, and just, like... I, it's it's wild to me that th this person doesn't even talk about the law or the the um the th yeah the the issue raised by it. like if you only read this review you wouldn't even realize it's about the plan B pill like you know being pro choice and and like like hypothetically you could be anti-choice, I refuse to use the term pro-life because they aren't, just look at how not angry they got when, what was that sheriff's name? I forget the name, but he let a woman die, uh, a baby die as the mother was giving birth by not t at attending to it at all because, oh, she was in a cell and, I don't know, maybe she was lying. Yeah, uh, you can tell when someone's giving birth. That's a that's a thing. Like the baby isn't invisible until it's completely left the just holy shit. And people didn't you know, people who claim to be pro life did not freak out about that because he's a conservative that they like, so they didn't just yeah. Um at least there wasn't like widespread I, I didn't hear about widespread anger from conservatives. They're they're fucking hypocrites and I hate it. Um so, even if you're anti-choice, you might, like, you might still be in favor of Plan B, because it's not really, you know, there, there are different degrees of, of anti-choice. You know, pro-choice or anti-choice is specifically about abortion, so, yeah. And, and you know, yeah, then they, they didn't even film this in South Dakota. It was filmed in New York, and the setting honestly looks nothing like South Dakota. And that really is the most important thing here. Like, okay, sure, you know, there are people getting pregnant because of a horrible regressive laws. But if you're going to set a movie in a place that has one of those laws, you really should make it look like the place. Jesus fucking Christ, lady. Um... Or, man, sorry, it was because a different, the, the other review specified that it was, the the other, I'll find it real quick, the, um, yeah, the other person who said that they lived in South Dakota starts the review with, my husband and I, so I'm assuming they're female, which, to be fair, they might, you know, maybe it is, may, maybe... It is a man or non-gender conforming. I don't know. But that's why I do not know if this person, if this other person is female. And then th at the very end, they say, on top of that, the movie was just bad. I mean, I guess eventually they got to an actual review. Um, yeah. Um, the movie was just bad. Five words of review. I, I don't know why it was necessary to to have all those other words before that with absolutely nothing to say that's in any way a review. Anyway, uh, yeah, then there's another person. This person gave it a 2 out of 10. Why are these girls friends? The two main characters, Sunny and Lupe, have literally nothing in common. In real life, there is no way that they'd be friends. They're not spoiled for choice. They're both unpopular. I've been in the same situation several times in my school years where, you know, at each of these schools, I had one friend, we had nothing in common, nobody else liked us enough to be friends with us. Just because it's not your situation doesn't mean it never happens. Like, I have always been a teacher's pet. 
and the yeah I I don't I'm not sure I've ever been friends with another teacher's pet um, and I guess there's also isn't there usually only one per class is that how it's supposed to, I don't know um, you know yeah there there were other like overachieving yeah actually yeah yeah uh, the other overachievers were girls and it was at the you know there's a there are some years of, of childhood where boys and girls are not allowed to like each other you know it was before dating age so the the yeah each time I was friends with one other guy that was just like really low on the on the totem pole and and another guy another time I was friends with a guy who was basically willing to be friends with me I, I don't think I think he was friends with basically everyone uh, yeah if, if I or, or yeah yeah other than the the at, at least one other person who was like at the bottom of the totem pole who didn't want to be friends with me I was willing to be friends with them they were an asshole to me so yeah that's that's a thing that happens and and yeah this is one of those people that the genre is all over the place is it a raunchy comedy or is it a drama it's both I don't know why I, I really hope we get to a point where people stop whining about this movie straddles genres that's a thing like that's it's and it's actually it's not even a new thing it's just I, I mean it happens more now but you know the the I can't believe I'm blanking on the title um the um crap it's right on the ah uh, okay I am I am certain that okay let's see it was called okay it starred shit I I just can't remember um let's see okay this is this is a way to find it yeah you know today we're finally getting a bunch of these movies that straddle genres but the the and I've actually you know it's not only that's it perhaps the oldest I know of is 1969's Butch Cassidy and the Sundance Kid and I know not everybody's gonna agree with me but I think that movie does a great job balancing the comedy that there is a lot of and then this honestly kind of tragic story that it also has and and apparently like um, the the director felt that people laughed too much at it and then he recut it I don't know if he was happy with the the with how it came out at, at the end but uh, you know but but also you know he was kind of an asshole to the the female star so I'm not I don't have a huge amount of empathy for him but it does suck when people misunderstand your your vision um, but but yeah that movie and you know more recently there are there are I've, I've seen more of them recently it's a thing like you can have more than one genre as long as they're not like going against like if, if the the every if you can if you can make the two things work together well you know there there are some horror comedies that do a great job of having yeah having both elements you know so yeah it's it's a uh, yeah let's see uh, oh yeah this person gave it a one out of ten uh, saying why does everything need to be so political why do they need to shove politics down your throat in every movie nowadays I mean uh, film has literally there's always been not not every single movie has politics but there's been politics in movies from the very start like even if you want to say oh you know it was like at the start they were basically just documenting you know when they like showed a train heading towards the camera and they were showing like I forget was it both or was it either that they showed people going to work 
or leaving where I, I forget but you know you could read into that a praising of capitalism you know saying ah look we we made trains and they go fast workers you know back when it's, I feel like today if you just have a shot of like workers going to work or leaving work it kind of depends on how you're leaning politically if what you see is like you know uh, uh, what, crap what, how did how did Marx put it um, labor being taken advantage of or you know happy workers it's so great that they have a job which you know I mean for sure if you're being treated well it's better to have a job than you know and you and you feel yeah, if it's if it's right, it's not right for everyone. You know, then it's I'm I'm not saying there's something wrong with being glad you have a job. Just don't you know try to hurt the cause of of labor unions and such. But but um, ah, that's a that's a that's one answer. Why do they need to shove politics down your throat in every movie nowadays? Oh right, ah. I know this one because Republicans want to force 10 year olds to have the incest rape baby that might literally kill them if they try to give birth. Yes, I realize that hadn't happened yet when this movie came out or when this review was written, but if you couldn't see the writing on the wall, you had to have your eyes closed. And then they go on to say, movies are meant to take you out of reality. I will grant that that is one school of thought. That's he's not th this person is not the only person to think that, but another school of thought is that they're supposed to make us think. Like if you if you want to be taken out of reality, you know, I don't know, take a nap, I guess. Just because some movies take you out of reality doesn't mean that it is the express purpose of every movie. It, take you tell you what watch some ads they're not supposed to you know yeah watch some watch some old ads about products if you don't wanna if you don't wanna be thinking let's see and then the uh, yeah then the person goes on to say they made all of the pro-life people in the film seem like total monsters and this is another case okay you know what There's something in this film that completely contradicts that statement. And I am going to try to avoid calling into question... Yes, I am... I am... I don't know why they didn't acknowledge the exception to that rule. I, I don't know why it was impossible for them to just include nearly in front of all. You know, they made nearly all of the pro-life people, but and I'm also like total monsters, really? I mean, he's an asshole, but he's not like gleeful about the you know, he's like, he's self-satisfied with his decision. He's not a monster. I, I, uh, okay. That's this person bringing their own baggage to it. I'm not saying there are no movies, or... I'm not claiming there's no media that makes, you know, pro-life, yeah, anti-choicers seem like total monsters, but this ain't it, chief. And then they say, I'm actually pro-choice, like the two characters in this film, but just don't want to see any political stuff in the movies I watch. And that's why this has a 1 out of 10. I'm, I'm assuming, because they didn't... Did they really not write... Okay, I... Did this person literally give it a 1? Did they, they did. They gave it a 1. Giving no other reason. Maybe there are other reasons, but they gave no other reasons. Yeah. And again, like, honestly, the moment that 
Republicans stop fighting tooth and nail. Like, you realize this is what they do. This is all they do. They, they aren't fighting for you. They're fighting against the people they don't like, and sometimes that includes you. They, they kind of seem to hate everyone except themselves and other rich people. Like, it's... It's kind of unsettling how much Republican politicians hate people who don't have political power. So, so yeah, as soon as they stop fighting, the the honestly, I don't, I don't like that Republican is now a negative, but I can't pretend that it isn't. You know, like tell you what, if you if you haven't voted Republican since before Reagan. Or, uh, t since before Nixon, then, you know what, I, you know, if you can acknowledge that the Republican Party has lost its goddamn mind, you know, that's, yeah, I, I don't begrudge you for voting, re for voting Republican before that, because I can look at the policies of Republicans before that and say, you know what, Fair enough, not everything here is terrible. They didn't used to be monsters, but that's the decision they made. So, yeah, now there are movies being made that criticize that. This movie could have gone much, much further if you want to see total monsters made out of, of anti-choicers. Now, uh, let's see... Yeah, the, this person... I guess, technically this qualifies as a review, but the person does make sure to say, I don't even want to describe the movie, it's way too boring for that. Then why are you writing a review? Like, is there someone going around, like, threatening people who are like, I feel, I don't really have anything to say about this movie. Like, I don't, I don't have to write a review. I mean, there's not, like some soul-crushing demon whispering in my ear that if I don't, it will crush my skull. So I just... Why? Why are you writing a review if you don't... if you don't feel like writing a review? Like, like what is that? You know what? You realize, instead of writing that you're so above writing a review for this, you literally could have just written, like, several sentences about the movie and hit submit, and no one would realize that you felt like it was below you. Like, I've probably written at least some reviews where I was like, you know, I didn't care about this as much as I really wanted to. I, I'll just, I'll just... BS something, you know, I, I, I'd I like to think that I've never written a review that's just like, I didn't like this, I don't want to write a review. Like, just, yeah. And then the, the, yeah, yeah. Then they go on to say, this is not a road trip movie, which is just like, what do you mean by that? Like, how do you define a road trip movie in a way that this doesn't fit? Like, they take a car, they, they, you know, they, yeah, they get a car, they drive, there's great music in it. I don't know, I, maybe he doesn't like the soundtrack, I guess, but then he had to, they, they would have to actually write that in the review for me to know that that was it. Instead, I just have to... Do they not know what a road trip movie is? You know, I'm, I'm not expecting the person who wrote that to be watching this video. But if you're someone watching this video and you think, you, you also don't think it's a road trip movie, I swear I'm much nicer in comments. If you comment and you just, and, you know, and you're not like writing something really hateful, if you just write what about this movie makes you think it's not a road trip movie, I would legitimately be interested in reading that. And I, I swear, I'm not going to write something. I, I am much... When I get on camera, I don't know. I get fired up, you know? 
when I'm read my other comments and and you'll see I am way more chill when I'm you know yeah and if you know and and when I'm like talking in person to another person you know I'm I'm much more chill but yeah and then they say not a teen comedy which is also again if someone watching this video right now does not think this is a teen comedy please explain it I swear I will read what you write and I will not write something angry in response as long as there's nothing hateful in there I I I'm just I I don't even know how you reach the conclusion and then they say not even comedy at all which I take to mean they didn't find it funny and that's fair it's not for everyone and then they say I don't know what it is and I don't care how does this have such a high rating I mean I can't read minds but I'm gonna go ahead and guess that the people who did give it high ratings like me did think it was a road trip movie did think it was a teen comedy and did think it was funny that's that's I can we can we stop like asking exasperately because you know th this person put two question marks after because one didn't suffice can we stop asking how does this have such a high rating like you realize you could just read other people's reviews right like that's a thing you're you're the person who submitted this went to IMDB to submit the review you could have just like read of a, a, you know high rated review and and if they did instead of asking how does this have such a high rating maybe present your counter argument maybe maybe actually engage with you know and and um wow Okay, yeah, I, um, I'm gonna, this next one, I'm gonna put it in the, yeah, yeah. Because that's, I'm gonna comment on that, but I'm not gonna, yeah, so the, the, this went on for longer than I thought it was gonna, holy crap. Okay, I'm probably gonna have to, to, yeah. So yeah, I would definitely say, you know, road trip teen comedy with drama more of a comedy than a drama but yeah uh yeah the the opening of the movie does a great job setting up character and giving you an idea of who it's going to be about at the very least and and kind of their the problems that they face i'm not going to give away whether it's a happy ending or a sad ending but the ending fits what came before i i quite like yeah i love the the ending of the movie um yeah uh, i saw some other people also really love the the ending of the movie um there is no deus ex machina or other convenient writing and the ending titles like i'm not sure there's I, yeah there's not really anything visual in there but at the you know the, the start of it has a really great song so at least at least listen to that but you know, you can be doing other stuff. You can have it on in the background, which I don't recommend for the movie itself. Some movies, but not this one. Now, the character. So, th yeah, Victoria Morales and uh, yeah plays Lupe, and I really appreciate. Like, there's way more to her than because because like at first she does just appear to be like a slacker you know and there's not really but I really you know at, at first I just thought oh slackers slackers can be funny but I came to really empathize with her I I at first I thought because I've I've never I don't understand slacking it's perfectly you know not everybody I'm not asking anybody everybody to be a teacher's pet but I don't personally understand the slacker kind of thing I'm not saying there's something wrong with it, but yeah, um, really, really came to care about the character and just, yeah, uh, and Kuhu Verma plays Sunny, and 
Uh, yeah, I've got some IMDb trivia. During an interview with Jen White on the National Public Radio Program 1A, director Natalie Morales said that the movie's two lead actors uh, had to do their chemistry auditions to see how well they would work together over Zoom because of COVID-19 precautions. That must have been a challenge, and they managed, because they really are, like, their chemistry is amazing. Honestly, if you just really want to, like, like, even if you don't care very much about the rest of the movie, just their chemistry is almost enough to, to have you invested. And a critic quote, as the vaping bad girl Lupe to Sonny's earnest overachiever, Morales combines knowingness and inner sweetness. Verma is just as skillful in giving Sonny layers under her perfectionist exterior. Absolutely. Plan B begins as a classic teen comedy that over the course of roughly two hours distinguishes itself as an empathetic and quick-witted portrayal of how two friends grow up together. Very true. Michael Provost as a hunter and just like, yeah. You can totally understand why, you know, Sonny is crushing on him. That's definitely, like, I, I'm not into dudes. Never have been, never will be, but, you know, he's charismatic. He's, he's very, you know, yeah. And I really appreciate they actually gave him personality. You know, it's not one of those, like, some stories about romance and such, where, where someone has a crush or is in love or such, one of the people is not given personality, and it's basically because if they have personality, some of the people watching the movie for the romance might be like, I don't know, I'm not attracted to that personality, and you might lose part of your audience. And I get that, you know, if you, if you are trying to maximize profits, for sure, but it really doesn't lead to very good movies. It's... Yeah. It's a, it's a, it's possible to get past that, but it is, you know, it is an issue, and it's better to just, like, yeah, in, in as a general rule, you know, I don't have any problem with, with romantic stories, uh, you know, I, I acknowledge that it's super problematic, but I used to really like Pretty Woman, and both of them have personality, both of them have character flaws, which, you know, it is gutsy. Like, I'm sure there were some women who watched that and didn't really find um, uh, Richard Gere's character attractive because he can be an asshole, you know? And that's part of, that's, you know, yeah, they, they, they took a chance there. And, and, you know, certainly he does also have sweetness in him. He can be very kind, but... Yeah, you know, and, and I'm sure there were some people who didn't like Julia Roberts, and she's also, you know, yeah, the, the, she can be somewhat, the, um, the level of respect she has for herself and how she tries to act around other people doesn't always, you know, some, yeah, there are, there are cases where, like, oh, you can't, you can't let people treat you like that, so, so, you know, she has problems herself. Mason Cook plays Kyle, and I did not anticipate, I kind of ended up liking him, and I really didn't see that coming, um, he is very much, you know, a a church boy, and, you know, he, like, he talks about, you know, I'm not telling you to leave your church, but my church lets us watch Harry Potter. So, it's, it's, uh, it's, yeah, I, I, honestly, let me, let me just, let me give you the address, because it's, you're, you're gonna love it, just, uh, yeah, and, and, um, he's kind of adorable, he, he likes close-up magic, he likes it more than he's necessarily, like, his, his enthusiasm for it, 
outweighs the skill level that he's currently at. Maybe he'll get better. Yeah, he was just he's a he's a sweetheart. And and just like that I I don't how do you watch this and not realize that he's like he's not a negatively care like that would be such an easy place to like just you know air a lot of grievances with the the Christian church but he's actually he's he's likable you know he's he's not some he's he's not god's angry soldier who has to convert everyone and and everything has to be done 100% you know he's yeah he's he's legitimately a sweet kid like um I'm not gonna lie, but if if they do make like a sequel or a spiritual successor or something, I'd kind of like him to be part of it. And I really did not think I would be saying that about a Christian white male, you know. And and certainly, like if you can't bring everybody back, then bring back the two leads. They're they're the heart and soul of the film. But I would actually be interested in in seeing more. Um, yeah. And Jolly Abraham plays Rosie. She's the mother of Sonny. She's a real estate uh, uh, agent. She works in real estate, and yeah, she does. She gives a, a really great performance. Like you, like yeah, she's she's strict, and you immediately get a sense of like. There's a very early scene where you see the the parents, and it's like okay. No wonder the the you know you you really get a sense of the pressure pressures that they're they're put on and that's another thing like I'm not sure I saw anyone calling out the parents but like if you're watching this and you're like why are their parents you know I don't think the parents need to be in the movie but you get a sense of the kind of, you know the the you see what Lupe is rebelling against and you see what Sunny feels like she has to live up to so yeah. Um, it's it's a short scene early on where you meet and and you really get a, a strong sense of them and yeah Jacob Vargas plays Pastor Pedro the father of Lupe and I uh, yeah um, the the character Logan is is played very well um, I thought the yeah um, and Xander is also great. Um, yeah, yeah. Rachel Dratch is Miss Floucher, the the this poor woman having to to do sex ed and and like the kids and like all of them. I you know they're they're all like why this is this is terrible. You you you're not helping us. You know the the stuff you're telling us is no help at all. Um, oh, yeah, yeah, I think I know who the, yeah, um, Edi, Ed, Eddie Patterson plays Doris, she's great, like, she, just a real sweetheart, a again, like, I don't know how you watch this character and say, oh, monsters, no, she's, like, just, just the sweetest, she gives them some directions, and just, uh, just, just, I don't know if they're super helpful, but she she puts her heart into it. She doesn't. She's not like oh, whatever. I don't. I don't care. No. She's like, oh, you're going there. Well, see what you're gonna want to do is drive down there. And there's a, you know, you you gotta go past that place. And, you haven't heard of that? Ah, oh, it's that place. Ah, oh, let me tell you. You know, and just like, and and instead of instead of telling them how long destination how, how yeah how 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 far they have to drive before they make a turn she says you're going to want to count one mississippi two mississippi and you're going to get to 20 mississippi and then you're going to wait want to make a turn and just bless her heart in in her parlance um oh yeah yeah uh, moses storm as as Andy is also uh yeah really really that was that was also very much enjoyed his screen time 
and uh, yeah, I already mentioned the the pharmacist and Joseph Calvaric plays Lupe's brother, and Josh Rubin plays Philip, and I've watched more than enough college humor that I recognized him the moment that he appeared. It's really cool to to see that like he's old school college humor. Like he's not, you know, yeah, I mean by now they they barely make videos anymore because of the whole you know, the um financial issue. But he's like super old school. You know, we're we're talking about like way back when, like, Gerwich was a major fixture of, of college humor. So, yeah, super cool to see that he's still getting work. And he's great. Like, he doesn't have a, a ton of screen time, so don't, like, go into it expecting a mess. But, yeah, very, very... Yeah, he made me laugh. That was... Yeah. And I think that pretty much... Yeah, that's it for the characters so let's see yeah that brings us to the dialogue uh right yeah there's only one entry in the IMDb quote section i have a couple of critic quotes most of the dialogue is very quick and fast which worked for the story very true and um yeah i don't want to give that away so that it goes into the spoiler section but but yeah um, I felt like everything, you know, there's, there's some, there's some slang that I hadn't heard, but I could always pick up, oh, that's what that means, and just, yeah, um, the, um, yeah, good, good dialogue, well written, well delivered. That brings us to the cinematography. Now, it was handled by Sandra. Va I got it. Based on that name, sounds like Nordic. Yeah, I'm gonna go ahead and assume based on that name, Sandra Velle Hansen. Um. Yeah, she she was born in Florida in the in the U.S. So, yes, that Florida. Um. I am not sure I've really seen, let's see, yeah, she, she uh, DP'd a bunch of shorts and some episodes of TV series, and yeah, it's, it's not the very first feature length thing that she has DP'd. And she has years of experience. Um, let's see. Yeah, not really anything that I know. Um, but the... Um, Yeah, um, you know, she's talented, you you can, there may be times where you can tell, okay, this was filmed on a budget, but she does a good job, you know, it doesn't feel like just the, what's it called, um, um, yeah, um, it doesn't feel like just... It's not bad, but it's on a budget. Like, if you're used to watching, like, you know, big-budget movies or something, it's, you know, obviously not going to compare to that. Uh, so, it's edited by Nathan Orloff and Brendan Walsh. And, let's see, the... Um... um yeah, I I'm not familiar with their other work, but it is it's not the very first time they edit something feature length. And 
Oh, wow. Um, Nathan went on to edit Ghostbusters Afterlife and John Wick Chapter 4. So, yeah, that's a that's a pretty big deal. Uh, it, look, it doesn't look like the other stuff they've done is quite that high profile, but yeah, it's, it's well edited, I guess. Yeah, it might not be something... <laughs> it's not necessarily something on this that, like, got attention but but yeah it's it's well edited it understands the rules of editing and knows when to follow them and when to break them and that's something I really appreciate and let's see yeah I have not found information about the budget neither on IMDb or on Wikipedia and yeah I don't you know that's sometimes the extent of my my research when it comes to stuff like that um and it does not appear to say where it was filmed but yeah the, they they found some great locations and they got some good stuff out of yeah and that brings us to the music which uh yeah there's a there's a music department I'm not seeing yeah there's I'm not sure this had a yeah there's a c assistant composer I'm not sure this I, I don't know how much this has like a composed score but it has an excellent soundtrack some really great needle drops and I read once that a major aspect of road trip movies is the soundtrack. And certainly, you know, I can only speak to, but, but yeah, this and the, the 2000 movie road trip, you know, excellent soundtracks. And I guess I, maybe Blues Brothers is, I mean, I guess that is technically a road trip movie. And, and that one has amazing music also. Um, let's see. And that brings us to yeah so the the pacing um it's not the fastest thing i've ever watched but yeah i guess it, it did move pretty fast i was never bored i never felt like oh wow why are we why are we doing this why are why aren't we rushing ahead into the next yeah and it is an hour and uh, uh, yeah, about an hour and 47 minutes, and yeah, I would say once they get in the car at about 32 minutes, if nothing up to that point has you interested in what is happening next, I, I'm not sure I really think, like, it hasn't gotten super episodic yet, but like, yeah, if nothing has made you laugh up to that point, and if you don't care about the quest for the Plan B pill, yeah, um, I don't think. Yeah, I, I'm not sure I would. I would necessarily suggest you keep watching after that. So uh, the best elements are tied between how accurate the perspective is, a funny yet respectful take on something so relevant. Yeah, the 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 two leads. Yeah, yeah. You know what? Honestly, if you spend that first thirty-two minutes, just if the if the one thing that works for you is the chemistry between the leads, keep watching because it it's amazing throughout the rest of the movie. So um, yeah, you know, if those things sound you know appealing to you. The, you know, it's worth watching at least once. So the worst aspect, ah, the thing I put in here, since you know, I try to, I try to put something there before I start the video, so that uh, you know, but I put this in before I start, before I watched the movie, and so I put in too long because. That was something I saw other people say, and I thought maybe I would. Um, I, yeah, uh, the, thing, the thing that, you know, now that I read that review by, I forgot her name, I'm afraid, but the, um, 
you know, it'll take me just a second to get. Now that I read the review by Amelia Harvey, yeah, the 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 worst thing about this movie is the fact that ultimately the the it, there is some it it could be more like um yeah i guess i i don't can i say this without a spoiler um i guess tell you what i will i will say it as the first thing at the start of the uh did i put it i put it here so let's see it's um um, here we go. Yeah, this is the thing that. Yeah, the the it'll be the very first thing I say when I get into the the thoughts section because it is a bit too much of a, a spoiler. Um. Yeah, it's not the kind of thing, like, I still love the movie. It didn't make me not love the movie. But I, yeah, if, if it's something, um, I can understand. I'll, I'll write that here. Uh, yeah. Um, yeah, I'll talk about whether or not it's a big deal when I start the thought section. So, yeah, um, something I saw several people say that bothered them was that it wasn't funny enough. I completely disagree, but, you know, humor is subjective. It's, uh, you know, yeah, I'm not gonna... I'm sure there are people who didn't find this funny who aren't, like awful people politically. The thing I was most worried about was that it would be too episodic and yeah I, f I felt like it just it worked like there was always the through line. The thing I was most looking forward to was you know seeing funny leads in a movie that are not white or male because there's so many movies that uh, like it's wild to me that there are people who think that women can't be funny like I'll acknowledge I'm not gonna claim that all women are funny and I'm not I I haven't I haven't been avoiding them but I haven't really watched the stuff that I am aware that there is like of um there are some female comedians that some people say are never funny I haven't really watched the their stuff um, so I can't, I can't comment, but, yeah, you probably already know, um, or you, like me, haven't been exposed to them very much, and, yeah, but, but, yeah, there are some people who say that, you know, women, like, I don't know if those female comedians are funny, but, like, I think, you know, yeah, I, I rewatched Road Trip just a few days ago. I maintain, like, Beth is probably, of all the characters... Oh, hold on, wait, crap. No, not Beth. Uh, I'll have it momentarily. Not Beth, that's Amy Smart's character. Tiffany. Nobody makes me laugh harder than Tiffany in that entire movie. Um, and, and I actually, I looked up... Like, apparently she hasn't done a, a huge amount of, like, really super interesting stuff. Uh, Rachel Blanchard, the actress, um, I, I don't know, maybe it's possible I missed something, but looks like she hasn't. I, I think she, honestly, it, I, I don't, I, I guess it is because of a bias against women in, in comedies, but I think, based off that movie, she could, they could easily have made a bunch more comedies that where she gets to be incredibly funny because it's it's unreal like it's a it's a movie full of funny people like every major character makes me laugh but nobody makes me laugh as hard as her it's it's 
just she's so freaking funny um yeah and the uh ellen albertini dow as barry's grandma r.i.p um she's incredibly funny um, Jessica Caulfield, I, I don't want to give away who she plays, but she's incredible. In general, love Jessica Caulfield. I, I, uh, what, what is that? She's, she's in, like, um, Urban Legends 1. Nope. Same director, though. Valentine. Also great in that. Um, Marla Sucharetza is incredibly funny in the movie. And, yeah, you know, Amy Smart you know a lot of the time she's more she's not as much funny as like she's she's you know she's the one he's like attracted to so she gets a lot of moments where she is you know they they underline that she's conventionally attractive they you know she gets to be charming a lot you know but when they let her be funny she's incredibly funny um like in the bus for example there's a yeah you, if you've watched the movie, you you may very well remember what I'm referring to, and you're welcome for putting that back in your head. Um, but yeah, you know they're both the the leads of this are really really funny. Uh, let's see. Um, yeah, the the trailer gives at least a little bit too much away, um, but it does also give you a good idea of what the movie is like. And it's not gonna, like, ruin the movie for you, but it does give away a little more than I think. But, yeah. The trailer made me chuckle. I'm not sure it would've gotten me to really keep an eye out if this wasn't on Disney+. Plus. Actually, it's entirely possible that, like, I saw the trailer back in 2021, and it didn't really make me, like, jump out of my seat to make sure to watch it, you know. But, yeah, I'm really glad I did. The cover and poster do not give too much away. Uh, let's see. Right, and that brings us to Rotten Tomatoes, where this has a 96%. Um, out of the 54 reviews, only two of them are rotten. Okay, I'm curious. Um, what was... Ah, uh, crap. That's not... How, oh, here. Nope, that's not... I want to just very quickly see what did the two rotten ones say. Right, there's the one who says it adheres to so many of the conventions that it, you know, it bucks those conventions. And, okay, another person says, as the film progresses, it becomes so tonally inconsistent that one is unable to settle in. I mean, I guess there's some tonal inconsistency. I, I guess I thought it worked well. Like, I... Yeah, I, I mean, okay, yeah, fair enough. You know what? I have unmedicated ADHD. Tried medication once. Made things worse. Yeah, maybe if you don't have, uh, you know, untreated ADHD, the, the tonal inconsistency will bother you. I cannot. And, and, you know, this is not someone who was, like, determined to hate the movie. Um, his name is Shikar Verma, so that, I guess, because it's a common last name, or is he related to the star, you know what, I, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna go there, and I'm also not gonna knock my phone off, because I'm gonna move it to where I can't knock it off, there we go. This has been fairly well received, is is what I'm trying to say here, and the audience score is 81%. Based on over 100 ratings, the average rating is 3.9 out of 5, so that's also fairly positive. Yeah, and the, and the average critic rating is 7.20. The critic's consensus? Plan B doesn't overplay its timely message, and it doesn't have to, thanks to a sharp, funny script and the sparkling chemistry between its charming stars. Absolutely. And on Metacritic, it has a 74 out of 100, based on 16 critic reviews, 15 positive, 1 mixed. And the mixed one is... 
Uh, yeah, they, they say, for all the ways in which Plan B is sometimes thunderously obvious, there's still a lot going on beneath the surface. And they gave it a 6 out of 10, so that's not, like, that's not terrible, you know. And, yeah, that's that's almost like, what's the opposite of a backhanded compliment? Backhanded insult? Front-handed? I'm, I'm gonna move on now. I thought I had a funny joke. I'm not gonna lie. I I thought that would be funnier. Um. Anyway, you know, I I'll, I'll admit that it wasn't that funny. Um. Yeah. There are right. It's it has a 6.5 out of 10 based on 20 ratings, 12 positive for mixed and four negative. And of the three reviews, uh, two of them are 10 out of 10, and one of them is six out of 10 and and mixed and. They just put in. See, see, I can I can respect this. They literally just put in the the dictionary definition of the word admirable, complete with the the phonetic spelling and everything. Um, yeah, I mean, if you don't really have anything to say, just put a word and the dictionary definition so people have something to go off. You know, why did he give it six? He thinks it's admirable enough for a six. You know, that's fine. Just yeah. And that brings us to the IMDB rating. It has a 6.7 out of 10, based on 4,114 IMDB user votes. 29.8% gave it 7, 18.6 gave it 6, 17.9 gave it 8, 8.7 gave it 10, uh, 7.2 gave it 5. I can... I have a difficult time understanding lower than a five, but I yeah yeah. If it really was, if you did not find it very funny, I can respect a five. And six point one gave it nine. Five point one gave it one. It's hard for me to believe that. That looks to me like review bombing, and that's one of the most pathetic things you can do. Honestly, like just just log off. Uh, Go, go, look in the mirror and try to figure out where it all went wrong, you know, um, instead of review bombing, bombing anything. Anyway, um, let's see. At the very least for, for progressive politics. If, if something has progressive politics and you don't like it, you know, it's fine to, to give it a low rating, but don't, like, go around and make sure everybody else does as well. It's just... It's it's pathetic. Let's see. Uh, 3.1 gave it 4, 1.8 gave it 3, and 1.7 gave it 2. And the... Let's see. Yeah. Um, there are... Oh, whoops. Accidentally closed it. Let's just reopen it, and there we go. There are 77 user reviews, or 71, without spoilers. I read all of them, and usually I just read the top voted 100, but there were less than 100. Um, yeah, 12 of the 77 reviews were... Let's see, yeah, gave it a, a 1 out of 10. 13 gave it 2, 7 gave it 3, 2 gave it 4, 1 gave it 5, 7 gave it 6... Uh, 6 gave it 7, 15 gave it 8, 9 gave it 9, and 12 gave it 10. So, yeah. Um, it's a... Yeah, I guess it is almost right down the middle that a, a bunch of the people who felt compelled to review it didn't like it, and a bunch of them did. Um, and some of them hated it, and some of them loved it. It's not a very special effects heavy movie. Um, yeah, uh, what there is is good. Um, not like spellbinding or amazing, but it didn't like look unconvincing. Uh, there's some really great stunts. Um, yeah, that that really add. Yeah, and the the. Uh, yeah, since this is, yeah, there's, there's some sexual material, it's largely played for laughs, 
and yeah, I found it very funny. Um, I think, you know, sex is one of those things we kind of gotta laugh sometimes about it because it's just, there's so much tension there as, yeah. Um, let's see. So yeah, I'm putting a couple of links, right now it looks like there's gonna be four links in the description box. Stuff that you might want to read. You know, and if I later think of something on YouTube to watch, that, you know, yeah, other, other positive reviews, or ones that I at least agree with even if they're they're not completely positive. Um, so yeah, um, on Disney Plus this does not currently have any special features and it... oh right, I... Not to do that, I'll really quickly go over... so yeah, uh, on IMDb this is the, the more like this list. Uh, yeah, links you to Unpregnant. Um, a current running TV miniseries, also called Plan B, which appears to have absolutely nothing to do with the pill, so swing and a miss, IMDb, um, just because it has the same title, but anyway, and that was also why I made sure to mention at the start of this that this is not that. Um, right, the, the Hulu movie Crush, I would like to, to do, is, is it still? Um... Yeah, it's still on, on Disney+. Plus. Um, yeah, honestly, if I end up not doing a video on that, it'll probably be because I'm just not quick enough to do it, and it ends up leaving the, the platform, but it looks good. I'd, I'd like to watch it. So, yeah, if you're watching this sometime in the future, or maybe I have. Um, there's also something else called Plan B, a TV series that started in 2017. It's in French, including the, the, yeah, I can't tell if this is about the pill either, but it looks like a sci-fi thing instead. Um, ah, it's a, it's Quebec TV, and possibly the best TV series from Quebec ever, says the only review that, ah, uh, yeah, this person, um, Okay, and then they wrote something in French, so I don't know if... Yeah, uh, never mind. Moving on. Uh, it's compared to Language Lessons by the same director. And not okay. And yeah, I... That makes sense. I, I myself brought up not okay earlier. Uh, something called I Want You Back. Another thing called Plan B. At this point, no, I'm I'm almost certain that that has nothing. You know what? Third time is said to be the charm. Who knows? No, but it does sound interesting. Um, yeah. Um, I think. Yeah, I I. It sounds like the plot description here gives a little bit more away than I would, but yeah, it sounds like my, it's from, it's from 2009, uh, so, yeah, you know, if, if you just want to check out movies called Plan B, um, that's certainly one, uh, one called Together Together, one called Do Revenge, one called Sex Appeal, which is on, you know, uh, uh, Disney Plus. Also, it's it's another Hulu movie that that here in Denmark I can watch on Disney Plus. I think it was the low. I think it was Rotten Tomatoes that had a low rating, which is too bad. the The trailer looked fine, um, and yeah, it doesn't sound like a terrible concept. But you know, cer certainly other people didn't like honestly yeah uh, if you're if you're watching this if you think that based on what I've said in in this video or other videos if you think that I would legitimately enjoy it like let me know in the comments because I I'm 
willing to, to watch, I'm, I'm just going to make double sure that it is still on, so I'm not making promises, so it's called Sex Appeal. Yes, it is currently still on Disney+, Plus. and yeah, you know, I, I rarely, but not never, watch stuff that's, like, rotten on Rotten Tomatoes, you know, the, the, um, because I heard so many good things about Jennifer's body, I did watch that, even though it's rotten on, you know, and, and, yeah, I definitely think that people did not, they, they just weren't ready for the movie that it was, so they judged it based on something that it wasn't, and, you know, it was marketed wrong. They were based, they were going off marketing, basically. Uh, but, but yeah, uh, so, you know, you can stream this on Hulu if you have Hulu where you are, and here in Scandinavia it's on Disney+. Plus. We don't have Hulu any other way, you know, Disney owns, or, uh, yeah, Disney has bought access to some of Hulu, I don't, it's, it's, um, yeah, whatever. Um, yeah, this is where I give my own rating. I think, yes, um, I rate this seven comedic takes on the crisis of reproductive rights in the U.S. out of ten. Um, I, I might watch this again later today, honestly. Uh, it's, it's such a, yeah. And I think, yeah, um... I hope more people watch it. Um, it's probably like the fact that the people making it and starring in it and such are not huge names. That's probably why it doesn't have because, like I said, you know, it's it's one thing that you know, okay, not everybody liked it, but there's not even that many people who even bothered to, you know, may, maybe more people did watch it than this, but. Only 4,114 people bothered to go to IMDb to give it a vote. You know, that takes just a few seconds, and it's free. So there's, like, you know, I, yeah, I hope more people watch it. Uh, you know, who knows, maybe this review, I'd, I'd like to, you know, that, that would be great if someone watches this video and decides to go and, and watch the movie and I just realized that I forgot to make yeah I real quick the Disney plus suggested section brings up crush love Simon which also sounds it sounds sweet single uh, I don't know how to say this I guess single and then drunk but it's uh, it's crossed out female paper towns the art of getting by Juno High Fidelity, the, um, I can't believe I'm blanking on her name, Zoe Kravitz, incredibly talented, it's, I swear, it's the ADHD, it's not, I, I really, really like her work, I, th I think she's incredibly talented, um, and the, right, here we go, so, uh, and Love Victor, which also sounds like a, yeah, I don't think Love Simon and Love Victor are like do they do they have anything to do with each other? Okay, no, yeah, cuz one it, one of them's a TV show. Oh, actually, I guess it's possible that they made that it's like a spin-off. I, I don't know, it's just it tickles my funny bone to to imagine that you know, they, they're, they're just going to make, like, a series of different, you know, it's always going to be love, comma, and then, you know, a, you know, the name of a boy that's apparently gay from, from what it looks like. It, it's, you know, I've never had a coming out experience, never will, I'm, I am, you know, like, I'm not, there's nothing, I don't have anything against it, I'm, but I, I am, you know, yeah, I'm, I'm certain, you know, if, if I was going to be attracted to, you know, anything other than, than women, if, you know, and if I were to be attracted to men, non-binary or, or, you know, 
it would have shown up by now, but so I can't I can't you know speak to what it's like to to you know yeah to to come out, but it is definitely um, I'm really glad that we're getting movies is what I'm trying to get. At. I'm really glad that we're getting positive stories of people coming out. And this is the part where I update the rankings. Um, yeah, I, I'll, I'll do the easy one. I've over, I'm 100% I'm certain this is the best of the... I, I guess I'll go ahead and, and mention it again in case... Holy crap, it's been two hours since I mentioned the first. So, yeah, I'm not expecting anyone to remember. Worst to best, all the raunchy teen sex comedies I've watched. The only ones I love are the top three. I have enjoyed watching each, at least on the initial viewing, although some of them are definitely problematic. Porky's 3, then 2, then 1. Van Wilder, American Pie 2, American Pie 1. Road Trip, Plan B. Um, okay, so I think I'm... I... Th I uh, crap. I guess... Um, overall, it probably lands... Um, yes, yes, this is... yes. So, the, my, my ranking for recent dark progressive films that are horror and or comedy, ranked worst to best, loved all other than Antlers, Antlers Not Okay, The Menu, Ready or Not, Plan B, Barbarian, Fresh, The Night House, and Everything Everywhere All at Once. It does not quite reach the, the heights of the, the top four of the list, but it is more consistently great than the menu, and Not Okay has a, an issue that I, I talk about, that's a spoiler for that, but yeah, um, and it is a little bit better than, than Ready or Not. There's a, I guess, ultimate, probably the biggest thing with Ready or Not is Samantha, I can't believe I'm blanking on her name. Um, I will have it momentarily. Samara Weaving is an incredible talent. I'm really glad she has a career. I thought she was amazing in the movie. I really think that the role should have been played by an actress of color. It really feels wrong that, yeah, that's that's probably the, the main thing. And, you know... This movie, it's not just like tokenism. They didn't just put people of color in, in this movie. They actually understand their perspectives. You know, I like this is the kind of thing, like, like yeah, honestly, um, I'm not sure I real well, okay, yeah. This and Ms. Marvel helped me realize how much pressure, you know, Indian and South Asian mothers place on their children, especially, you know, or especially, uh, certainly immigrants to, to America. You know, maybe also, I, I don't know if it's worse um, if they haven't, if they're not immigrants. But yeah, um, so, you know, yeah, this is something where, like, you know, I don't know if it's super likely, I don't know if we have a lot uh, here, but yeah, if I meet a, you know, a, um, an immigrant from there, you know, I'll, I'll, I'll be more sensitive when it comes to, you know, yeah, the, the, clearly they have very strict and, um, yeah, um, overprotective mothers, a, a number of them. So, yeah, uh, that is it for the, the review itself. So that brings us to 
the thoughts sections. So, start with notes taken while watching, and as promised, the very first thing I will say is the stuff that, um, yeah, I blanked on her name again. So I'm just gonna, real quick, open, it is the review by Amelia Harvey. It's all a little polite and safe, encouraging the sentiment that women can't join in the gross-out gags. The scene where they meet a drug dealer in the park who has an intimate piercing gets very uncomfortable. Played for laughs, the fact a comedic scene about being forced into oral sex in return for a contraceptive pill exists in a film like this doesn't feel right. And I could absolutely understand not wanting to watch the movie and deciding to not watch it knowing that about the movie. So that is definitely, that is the worst thing, I, th I think, in, in my opinion. And, yeah. Yeah, there's some chance that if I did know that before watching the movie, I would have not watched it. But, you know, ultimately, this, you know, her review was still counted as fresh, not rotten. Uh, holy crap. I, I think, you know what, I'm just gonna... I'm going to double check real quick to make absolutely certain that I am not misrepresenting her in any way, shape, or form. Yeah, her review was still considered fresh, not rotten. Uh, let's see. Yeah, and, and I just wanted to briefly note, the, the thing with the condom coming off, that does happen in real life, especially if you don't have good sex education. That's not some ridiculous thing that only takes place in films. And I really appreciate that they did have her use contraceptive contraception. Um, and yeah, another thing that Lupe wants Sonny to find a way to invite Hunter over for some Disney Plus and Thrust, a line that makes me giggle, snort every time I think of it. And now we're going to get into my personal... Th those were a couple of... Yeah, so, yeah, my, my thoughts and in chronological order. I love the contrast between Sonny being responsible, Lupe not being responsible, and the annoying parents and how controlling they are. You know, pa Pastor Pedro outright, like, demands that she wipe off the the lipstick and then as soon as she leaves the house she puts in the nose ring or was it a lip uh, yeah nose ring i'm gonna double yeah nose ring uh because it's on the it's on the i'm to be cover thing um and you know she kicks over in ang in anger she kicks over the the uh, like um what's it called like I, I guess it's like an angel stone angel or something and walks off in a huff and then slinks back raises it and walks off and that's such a great you know it's not the funniest joke i've ever you know seen but it's such a great it really tells you she wants to rebel but she can't quite go too far and she feels a little bad about it kind of thing you know that really tells you so much and you know i i appreciate the detail that like you know sunny is the one seen to to masturbate you know, she, like, basically doesn't think that she's going to be able to have sex anytime soon. She's sexually frustrated, maybe. You know, so, yeah, and, and yeah, she uses the, the anatomy book. Because, you know, that's the best she can get. You know, her mother isn't going to let her get anywhere near something that's, like, way more risque than that. So, you know, yeah, and, and... You know, Lu Lupe does not is not seen to masturbate because you know ultimately she probably expects to to hook up with with Logan fairly soon or, or hook up I yeah to get together with I I don't mean to you know clearly they are trying to make a make it a relationship not just like one time sex kind of thing so so yeah um, but but yeah it's the the um, you know, the, the, we see that, um, I'm just gonna very briefly rewatch, 
some of yeah so the yeah sunny you know here's the alarm and like yeah checks the yeah you know she she gets out of bed as soon as it is and lupe has this set up with neon lights to wake her up and you know she yeah she sleeps in apparently and you know yeah um sunny is brushing her teeth lupe is vaping you know just immediately you get a sense of and and yeah sunny starts um let's see i think she's i guess she's taking notes for for class or something like that you know probably you know not not like last minute not not that she's postponed doing it but like just to to get ready you know and lupe stays on her bed checking her phone you know and right and and does some uh are that is that called a selfie i'm not f super familiar with it. she she takes some pictures of her butt and and later sunny is like yeah you know uh looks good at least you kept your pants on you know at least you're wearing underwear or something like that you know so, and yeah then we get the 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 masturbation and i love the detail that she you know the little uh, stuffed animal the the um, elephant she turns around so it can't watch her while she she does it and it cuts direct smash cut from her starting to masturbate to her mother doing her hair so like right away we can see you know oh wow like parents a lot of parents you know i, I know you mean well and i'm not uh, to be clear i'm not judging her her culture i'm saying as a, as a general thing a lot of parents gotta get better at not like she's 17 and you know her mother is still dealing with her hair like it seems like her mother is not willing to accept that she's growing up you know and let's see yeah and the the yeah you know there's um she got one question off, so she got a 96 instead of a hundred. What happened? You know, just so so yeah. And let's see the the yeah. And and Pastor Pedro demands she wipe off the lipstick and and you know insults her appearance. And she points out, I thought we didn't insult each other in this. You know, and so yeah. There's a. I'm I'm sure that she said something maybe about him, maybe about her brothers at some point cuz you know siblings, family. You 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 know sometimes you say something negative. It's, you know, maybe especially at, as a teenager. I I said some things. Wow. Yeah. Um you know so he's like in this house we do not insult each other, but then when he insults her you know, yeah. Double standard is what I'm what I'm getting at. And let's see. Yeah, I, I really like that, you know, Sunny is such a you know, she's she's um you know, she's she's such a she wants to get everything right, so she even makes a munchy bag for Lupe. If Lupe left the house with a bag of something for the munchies, Pedro would know about the, you know, so, so, yeah, it's, a, that's a, that's a great, yeah, and I swear, this is a movie that actually makes you empathize with you, you know what, when this movie started, I thought, oh, Megan's the one we hate, I guess, you know, that, I, I was kind of just ready for, you know, yeah, Megan and Emma, Oh, actually, now I'm starting to... Do I have, like, white person blindness? Um... Y yeah, yeah, Megan was the one that Hunter left with. Emma was the one still standing there. I thought, okay, I guess we're supposed to hate them. You know, and, and certainly, um, you know, the, the comment about the the 
you know, her armpits, and, you know, is that a Mexican thing? You know, that was really, ugh. But, you know, yeah, the, the, you know, talking about, like, sex, and she's like, I mean, it didn't feel good, but I, I'm sure it looked good, you know, and it's like, she doesn't even realize that's not, like, again, you know, she, yeah, she, there's, there's so much pressure on her, she feels like she can't, it's not okay for her, like, I don't think she told the guy that it wasn't great, it, it you know, she probably feels like, no, 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 I, I, you know, the sex is for him, and it's supposed to look good, so, that, you know, the movie is showing that these, these really patriarchal values are affecting, you know, not only the, the, like, marginalized girls, the, the women of color, but also, like, you know, the, the popular girls, you know, but, yeah, Megan, like, you know, later we find out, oh, you know, the reason they left together was she was super wasted, needed a ride home, which is an anti-drunk driving message, so I approve, and, you know, she threw up on the, so, so Hunter is not interested in her, and that, you know, yeah, the, like, the worst thing is that, you know, oh, she, she threw up, you know, that's not, like, you know, I've, I've, so many of these raunchy teen sex comedies are so misogynistic. Like, they hate women. Like, you would think that, yeah, it's just the, the, and, and, yeah, this one, there wasn't really, was there any misogyny? I'm, I'm not sure I really, um, I don't know, you know, if maybe, maybe I, it's possible I, I missed something. Please let me know if I, you know, I, I don't want to, to miss. I, I want to pick it all up so I can, you know, yeah. Um, but yeah, Emma was apparently, like, talking about, like, declass... Uh, you know what, I'll, I'll get to it when I, when I get to it. But what I want to say is, they were, you know, we, we don't know very much about them, but they didn't seem, like, really awful people, like, the, the, you know, there's the, the bullying thing, which is also, like, the, the, um, did they point that out? I th yeah, I think they, did they say something about it? It's, it's natural, you know, the, the, um, because it is, like, look, you're allowed to have preferences, but I don't think that women should be forced to, you know, it, if you actually look at it like the rea in in reality so, you know in in america the, the um yeah f female body hair used to just be thought of as you know whatever it's you know it's 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 body hair it's not like it's it's not a it's not some sort of like there's nothing there's nothing wrong with it you know and then, like, someone decided, hey, we could sell shavers to women if we convinced them that their body hair is wrong. You know, I, I think I think it makes a lot of sense for men to shave their beard. I, you know, yes, I, I think we should shave our beards. I, I've, you know, I, I started shaving as soon as I started growing a beard, and I will keep shaving as long as my facial hair continues to grow, you know, that's not a, th you know, that's different. Hair under your arms and like, okay, I'm not going to get into details, but there are places on the female body that hair grows. I don't think they should be forced to shave. I, I don't think there should be an expectation that women shave. Um, yeah. And, yeah, I appreciate that, the, you know, this, this brings that up. It, it, you know, this points out that, you know, that kind of thing is, is natural. And, I don't know, I guess, arguably, could I be reading into... Ah. No, I, I, you know, the movie is basically saying, you know, based, based on, you know, the, 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 the little bit of characterization that Megan and Emma do get... It's basically because they feel like they have to live up to certain expectations. So it's, you know, they, they don't, it, it bothers them when they see 
one of their peers like that, you know, and yeah, you know, it come, comes out as bullying, but it's not like, um, you know, it's, they're not, I don't want to make excuses for bullying, um, yeah, I'm, I'm saying there's, I, 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 I like that the movie chose something where there's a difference and that it's something that, like, you know, shouldn't be considered a problem. You know, it's not like Lupe is, like, let's hypothetically say that Lupe was, like, punching other girls and one of them made a nasty remark about that. Okay, don't punch people, but, you know, it's it's hair. Why Why do you care? You know, kind of thing. And the, you know, I love that she had such a great comeback. You know, the, the you know, because, because yeah, you know, she's like, oh, makes me wonder where else you, you might have, you know, hair growth. And, and let's see if I can, if I can get, oh, I'm so glad that you spent some of your spare time thinking about the the what was it, the hair length of my pussy or something like that you know just such a great and and she's like I I wasn't I I wasn't you know it just that's a that's a great you know I will grant that that's that is perhaps a homophobic joke but it's so goddamn difficult it's so fucking difficult to find ways to go after behavior and people that we realize are wrong without slipping into something that you know marginalizes someone else it's it's yeah but but that was a, a great and then you have the the um what's it called um crap what's it called the the um yeah you know she yeah um sunny supports lupe and says you know you you know, people are attracted to you, and, and she's like, you know, the, the underwear that my mother makes me wear makes me look, you know, completely sexless. And, you know, she shows it to, to Lupe, you know, which, which is, you know, that's okay to do in the, in the, you know, it wouldn't be okay if they were, like, in the hallway, but they're in the, the ladies' act. Yeah, Change no changing room. I I don't. I'm not a sports person. I don't remember what it's called. But yeah, you know they just had PE, and or or are about to have PE, something like that. You know, and and Lupe says, "Oh, is is that underwear?" Because I thought that you shaved off the, your nipples, and it's just it, yeah, it is completely ridiculous. And and again. I'm not saying that as an anti-Indian thing. I'm saying overprotective parents. Let's see. And I, you know, and and then we have Kyle walking up and being like, oh, what's that behind your ear? And he does the, the thing where he pulls it out. And it's like, I, I can't, like, act it out to complete, uh, uh, but the thing he, you know, he accidentally has the, he has the, the coin thing out in his, you know, before he's, like, away from the ear, so it's like, you can, you can clearly tell how he did it, and just, you know, but maybe he'll get better, but, but that was very, very adorable, and, like, you know, so, my sure, you know, and, and she's like, Kyle? I told you, I don't want to compare churches. And he's like, well, yeah, I, I forget if it was before or after that, but he says the, you know, my church lets us watch Harry Potter. So, you know, and because he's, you know, adorable, he accidentally, you know, he's, oh, yeah, yeah, that was, yeah, they were, they were getting ready for PE, and then we see some PE, and the, yeah, you know, Honey, you can't you can't just back up while they are. I, I forget what it was, but it was some like ball game, and they were talking about how he was wearing a cardigan like a sexy librarian. Was that what it was called? You know, while playing the or like 
yeah, yeah, something like that, you know. And and Kyle, you know, he backs up too much, and someone like rams into him. And I don't think it was even on purpose. Like the person didn't realize that Kyle was backing up there, and just immediately like hits the ground, and immediately goes, "I forgive you." Honestly, like, if you're gonna be, like, a Christian, you're gonna go around, like, telling people about your church and inviting them to the church talent show and all this kind of stuff, please be more like Kyle. Be adorkable. Don't be, like, obnoxious about it. And, yeah, we get the, the, we see the sex ed video, which is just, so wow i how do you holy crap they actually like they they made that thing i i wonder if was that like um i guess it was probably um i'm not seeing people in the cast as like oh yeah yeah it, yeah they made it for the movie it lists here bride and groom and oh the girl playing the bride is actually a, a writer she wrote and produced 10 episodes of the killing game one episode of small group she wrote and executive produced best friends a short and she yeah she has a screenplay for um for a tv series called Flirtation. That's very cool. I'd I'd like to. Yeah. Um. Let's see. Is this the only? Oh, she. Yeah. She's acted in in ten things. Or uh, yeah. She has four upcoming. Mm, yeah. I'm. This is the only thing I'm that she's in that I'm familiar with. But yeah, I'd like to see that stuff. She. She was really great. Like she nailed how like melodramatic it was. No, like had I only known, I would never have let other drive, other men drive my car. It's just yeah, and the and the the way it's filmed and edited, just so funny. And they have all these, you know, like the 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 questions for for the you know the the what's it called? So the um um. Yeah, the, um, the, um, um, yeah, Sonny says, you know, if, if our cars are vaginas, mine is a Ferrari. It never leaves the garage, you know, for, and, and, like, at first, Lupe's like, oh, so you really think, that, you know, you, you think you've got something impressive there, you know, and Sonny's, no, it's self-deprecating, you know. And I really like, you know, when Lupe hears that, she's not like, ah, you're not, you're not all that. She's like, yeah, you, you go, you know, that's awesome. And the, the, uh, what's it called? The, um, um, come to think of it, the, the, them talking behind her back. I think it was Megan who said something really, really mean about um, Sunny. Was that because she was super wasted? So basically, like the drinking got like a, a nasty side out of her, and she, like, she's she's meaner than usual. That's uh, again, you know, it's like alcohol isn't fundamentally a, a bad thing, but you know. You, you gotta be careful not to... Yeah, yeah, if she was so wasted that she threw up in the car, you know, she's she's too wasted to have good judgment still. So, so yeah. Um, let's see. Uh, yeah, I really love how supportive Sonny and, and Lupe are of each other. I love, you know... Okay, are there any serious questions? And I don't... I don't think there ended up being any serious questions so yeah I do empathize with the the teacher because like they force her to teach this stupid used car metaphor and you know it's this thing it's, so why what does he not have a car oh he has a car don't worry 
he has a car. They're just not inspecting it in this video, you know. And and the uh, yeah, and I think one of them points out why is why does her car get ruined but his doesn't? Kind of you know. And and one of them says, what if you don't what if you don't take the car out for a drive, but you just like drive it by yourself? Yeah, you don't you don't drive with someone else, but you drive it by yourself just to check the oil works. Quality dis of metaphor, dude. That was great, you know. And then everyone in the room realizes that he's talking about masturbation. And the the let's see, there was uh yeah yeah, and I love yeah, you know the the um let's see, I forget was it maybe the teacher who said, you know the the. You you can't let another man you, you can't let a man drive a woman's car before they're married because you know it'll tear and Sunny you know I I really love that it worked out for her because there's a second where it's like oh crap is are they gonna laugh at her for saying it she points out it stretches it doesn't tear um what's it called the the ah crap. That's a, uh, ah, crap. I, I am not entirely sure what the next thing means. But, but yeah, I think she says something like that's a, you know, it's, it's a, it's a myth that it, and, and it's true. And I, it really, it's such a misogynistic idea. And it's like, I, I forget, I forget who it was, but, but I saw someone online point out, Women give birth to babies through the vagina. So there's like, do you really think that a guy's dick is going to be the thing that like leaves some kind of permanent, you know, it'll, it'll the, the, you know, the vagina will never be the same because of a big dick. And it's like, seriously, think about it. Think about it for two fucking seconds. Like, do you think that... Once a woman has given birth once, it's just permanently damaged and there's never going to be good sex for her or for her partner ever again. Like, if that was the case, there would be way fewer babies being born. You know, they're, they're all, it's already, you know, there aren't as many babies being born, which, you know, I think is a great... Uh, what's it called? Uh, a great motivation to, you know, let in more immigrants. You know, obviously, to, you know, don't ma make sure that there is some, you know, measure of safety. Some some safety measures, of course, but like, conservatives hugely overblow how dangerous immigrants are. And the the, you know, ag again, a lot of immigrants are much nicer than the people who were born in the country because people who were born in the country feel like this is ours and people who come in are like this is amazing you know so the again not everyone but yeah um but but yeah you know the the i i really love that this film points out and that is something you know she like she does a lot of her own research she she actually does her own research it's not like this thing of you know, that, that people like to say, you know, when, when COVID was really, I'm going to do my own research. No, you're not. You're going to Google it until you find an article that agrees with you. And then you're going to print that out and carry it everywhere, you know, waving it around like a flag so that you can be an asshole to everyone who just doesn't want to fucking die right now. That's, that's, that's what people mean when they claim they're going to do their research most of the time, but she actually did her research, and yeah, it is, you know, that sex ed in rural states are not going to teach you that, but it's true. It doesn't tear, it stretches. And let's see, yeah, I really love the, the, the invitation, you know, it's, it's so, because like, you know, Lupe, you know, she's, she's the more, like, she has more, more of a, um, 
she's more willing to to put herself out there. You know, we also see that when she, you know, when they pretend that the Plan B pill is for her. You know, she's also uh, that was also such a great, you know. So uh, we need the, um, you know, she, she Lupe Sunny can't say it to the pharmacist, and Lupe just says, "I need the Plan B pill," and Sunny just immediately says, "I love you." Because it and and that is that's get you a friend who will claim you know who will who will take the the you know because it's like she's still you know that's still um what's the word like she is you know if if he thinks that she is pregnant that or, or could get pregnant you know she could also you know he could he could say something really awful to her you know so it's you know it's not like she you know it's still not like a completely faceless uh, yeah um but but yeah the invitation you know she, lupe pushes and, and says sunny's having a, a party at, at her house and she's oh yeah love a good teenage party with the with the drinking and the and the touching and the drugs <laughs> I really like when Sunny tries to like it's you know it's because she doesn't have a lot of you know she likes confidence and she likes experience so she's not good at sounding very convincing when she is you know when it is this more like yeah that that kind of thing and the the yeah they we we get a a sequence where they make improvised punch that yeah wow that that's um that's that's legitimately awful seeming and yeah because that's what you do when you like you know they basically took everything alcoholic they could find and mixed it together because it's a party there's gonna be punch you know if the yeah they can't get alcohol they can't go out and buy alcohol because they're not of age yet so yeah, they just mix in everything that just yeah, and you know they they try to drink some and what was it they said that tastes like strawberry um, something or other and let's see um, yeah the the just and and you know the the I don't think Sunny did but Lupe. You know, she's, oh, it tastes so bad. And she takes another sip because it's like, she's a teenager. She wants to get drunk. It's alcohol. You know, it's, yeah. Honestly, honestly, if there was a man in the house old enough to shave, there's some chance that there's going to be, like, aftershave in that punch. So they dodged a bullet with that one. I'm not saying it's super easy to live in a one-parent household, but I'm just saying... Could have been worse, you know. That's that's a that's a yeah. Um, let's see, and the um, yeah, the the I, I really like when you know the the yeah, Sunny got the word skull fuck into her head. Uh, you know, she's yeah, and and the. Yeah, it's, it's, um, what's the word? Like, she's, you know, so yeah, it's, it's in her head, and, and, you know, lets in, in Hunter at the door, and, you know, we realize in retrospect, oh, he was actually super happy to be invited, you know, and he's really happy to be, you know, oh, she comes at the, to the door, and, like, but he's, he's better at keeping, um, what's the word? You know, not showing his his interest in her, even though he's been interested in her for years. You know, and the the yeah. So she's you know opens the door. Hunter, hi. Want a skull fuck? Oh shit. Um, no. I'm. It's a it's a drink. You know, I. You know, I'm not asking you to to skull fuck me or anyone else at the party unless you want to. But it's a drink. That's really, really funny because what's did they mean to title the drink that I I forget but but the yeah you know it's 
yeah, you know, before. If I, you know, if I, you know, it would maybe have been great if she said, you're going to love drinking this, and then they go over and she says, we call it Skullfuck. You know, that would be a way to do it, but no, just open the door, Hunter, hi, want a Skullfuck? <laughs> that's, yeah, that's not a, it's not a great way to start an ongoing relationship, maybe. You know, that's, a, yeah, and the, the... Let's see. Yeah, you know, after they, they talk behind uh, Sunny's back, she goes in and alters her clothes and her makeup and, you know, hypes herself up in the, in the mirror. Oh, yeah, I just, you know, I don't dress like this at school because I don't want to overwhelm people. Get that dick! <laughs> That's really, really funny. And, and you know, she, she feels uncomfortable even saying you know, saying the word pussy to the mirror to hype herself up, you know, it's, this is the part where you're supposed to, you know, not hold back, because it's a mirror, it's not gonna, it's not gonna remember it, um, unless it's a drunk Julie mirror, of course, in which case, boy, are you gonna hear about every single mistake you've ever made, seriously, subscribe to Julie Noki, hilarious, there you go, a funny woman. Um, yeah, the, the, yeah, that was, that was great, and, and, um, let's see, I, did I have the, I saw where someone, yeah, um, let's see, she lets down her hair, puts on makeup, turns a sweatshirt into a crop top, and in my very favorite move, hacks her full coverage beige underwear into a thong. And yeah, that's yeah, that's that's a, a great uh, yeah. Um, let's see, and you know, Kyle also says it's the first thong he's ever seen uh, in person, or w was the first he's seen. Period, because he doesn't get to look at uh, yeah. Um, let's see, and yeah, she sees Hunter and Megan going to the car, and then like. You know, she, yeah, she, she gets the, you know, she asks, where, where's, where's Hunter? You know, oh, left with, with Megan. And, and, you know, she starts to leave. And we, the audience, I don't think Sonny realized, but Emma is apparently talking about the CIA declassified. So she's not like this, you know, she, she has thoughts in her head. She, she actually, that's like, she, act, yeah, um, you know, that's a, that's a, and, and it didn't seem like it was just, oh, she's just trying to impress him or, or something. Yeah, she's actually that engaged, but, you know, yeah, and now that she's drunk, she, you know, she, she, you know, her inhibitions are gone, so she's talking about stuff she cares about, and what do you know, it's not about whether this or that sex move looks great, it's about actual stuff that it just yeah really really I, I really appreciate that um let's see yeah and and you know sunny goes into the bathroom um yeah she i think she might be going there to to cry to and and you know runs into to kyle and he's like no i'm not i'm not going number one but my eyes are just so precious and you know, he's, and, and, yeah, she just, she's like, do I look, it, you know, am I some sexless, you know, and, and, you know, so, so, yeah, he, he tries, and, and, no, yeah, it's, it's genuine, he's, he is attracted to her, at least now, you know, and, and he says, you, you've got kind of a, a jasmine thing going on, wrong ethnicity, oh, I'm sorry, that's the closest one we have, <laughs> yeah, that's sad, but true. And let's see. Um, 
and and the the um what's it called uh I crap I don't what did I yeah most of what I wrote is in it like shortenings of stuff so um. Yeah, I I am I'm not sure, but anyway, the you know, yeah, the you know he offers her a hug, which is also just you know, it doesn't always lead to sex, but it can, and he you know he doesn't, you know he he's afraid of this kind of thing, so it's not, you know, he is legitimately like it's just it's a it's a nice thing to do. It's you know don't stop offering hugs to people that you think might need it as but you know maybe don't do it to like a complete stranger but you know they go to the same school they are on first name basis you know when she walks into the the bathroom she's not like what the hell who are you she's like oh hi Kyle you know I'm not saying she says that I'm saying she recognizes him so yeah you know hug and then she's like you know, she touches him, and the the um, what's it called? The the yeah, you know, she they they she gets onto the the um the the thing she sits on, and he's like, I I can't reach you, and she's like, get the squatty pie. Oh, right now I remember. Yeah, yeah. He says he says that the condom smells like fruit pebbles. Which is, like, of all the erotic things he could have said, like there's a there's a long list, and it's nowhere on it. That's that's, but it's probably true. Like he, you know, that that's the first thing they think of. Like she, uh, Lupe said it was strawberry flavored. So yeah, you know, it, the first thing they think of is fruity pebbles. Just yeah, and squatty potty. That is the, you know, get the squatty potty, like, if, if you've never heard that said to you as you're trying to have sex, <laughs> you're one of the lucky ones. No, seriously though, that's, that's really, really funny. And, and, you know, he, he doesn't, he has bad sex ed, so he doesn't, he's not good at telling apart and, you know, starts, yeah, tries to, tries to get in there and she's like oh exit only like i've never heard that but like immediately oh that's yeah and and you know he is also like oh sorry sorry but it, you know he does and and again that's that's a thing that happens you know that doesn't that doesn't have to mean some as as long as you immediately respect that it's you know and and you don't do it on purpose, if if you haven't, if she if she hasn't consented, and yeah, you know it is, it it's over very quickly because he's you know let's be honest he probably doesn't masturbate so he's never learned how to to postpone an an orgasm you know, and he's actually upset and I felt empathy for him like think of how easily it could have been. Like, he could have been like, what, what did you do to me? You know, he, he does say, I don't know what came over me, but he doesn't put it on her. And he doesn't say, you know, I, I, I thought you were a good girl. How could you do this? You know, and, and yeah, he's, you know, it's, it's a movie, like, it doesn't spend a lot of time on him, but clearly he is upset about it too. You know, it is, he, he wasn't, you know, yeah, yeah, he thinks, he's been taught that there's something wrong with it, which of course there isn't. And later, you know, he, he calls and he's kind of freaked out, and then he calls again even later, and he's like, I'm, I'm sorry, you know, what, it, you know, and, and, yeah, the, the, and, and, and the other, you know, the, the other girl comes in and she's like, do you have a tampon? It's like the shine. That's 
I would probably have laughed harder if South Park didn't do that exact same joke, though. But it was still funny. And I guess this is where... Like, I saw one critic say that the parts of the movie were fat-phobic. I don't see that at all. Um, what's the... What's the fat phobi thing against her? Like, no, Sunny and Lupe didn't make fun of her for her weight. I yeah, I, I don't see it. Um, I don't think. Again, if if you can inform me, please put it in the comments. I I don't know. I I didn't pick up. If maybe there were, maybe there was something fat phobic in the movie, and I just didn't pick up on it. But. Yeah, I, I did not pick up on it, and I I think there's, you know, it's it's a, it's again a thing that's in a lot of these movies, so, yeah, it's, but, yeah. And, you know, it kind of fast-forwards through the rest of the party as, you know, they're on the sofa, they're sad, because Hunter left, and Logan isn't, you know... Yeah, Logan didn't even respond for a while. Um, and the yeah, yeah and and you know the the um, the the overweight student you know also passes out on the um, on the sofa next to them and then you know someone like draws uh, what's it called um, yeah draws draws dicks on her her face you know, so she's also a, a bully target, and, oh, was that, did someone think that that, that we were supposed to laugh at that? I don't think we were supposed to laugh at that, and they also, you know, they take selfies where they make fun of the fact that Sonny and Lupe are, you know, asleep on the, on the sofa, and, let's see, yeah, and, and the next one, you know, what's the bucket for? Blah. And, the, you know, not, not long after, she also needs to use it, and you know the the yeah it was it was really funny when when you know she she says oh you know yeah I, I had sex with Hunter and she's like you know she doesn't correct her because she's so embarrassed about it being with with Kyle instead you know and she's like just yeah um let's see and and the yeah you know she she goes to to pee, and the con, you know, you're splat, and, she's, and she looks down, and the condom came out, and, and later she realizes, oh shit, I didn't, I didn't get rid of the condom, it's just there, like soup, you know, and just, yeah, because, you know, once, once she sees it, she's just immediately, okay, we gotta get the plan B, you know, so, yeah, um, and, you know, she, yeah, she talks about the, the, you know, so, so, yeah, the, the sperm was, was up there. And then she says, when my mom finds out, she's going to kill me. And then she's going to kill herself. It'll be a murder-suicide. And then she says, oh, no, maybe I have TSS, but I never I never used a, a, um, a tampon. It's just, yeah, really, really funny. And let's see. Yeah, so they, they go to the pharmacy. I think I've said everything I had to say about that scene already. But, yeah, you know great scene and let's see um texts i'm not sure what that's supposed to be about anyway um and then oh right yeah i think it was the the text between logan and um yeah um lupe and the the indian mafia was really funny and like you know Apparently, there, you know, she, cause, cause her mom finds out that she went to a bowling alley up in, in the, you know, and, and that's like, okay, bowling alley, you know, we can work with it. At least she wasn't, you know, her mom didn't find out about, like, the drug den that she was at, you know, so, so, yeah. Let's see. And, um,. Yeah, um, and and you know they they leave the the pharmacy, and I th yeah I think it's it's um, um, 
what's it called? The um yeah, the the part the, the bench outside, you know, it's advertising Rosie's real estate and I mean they don't make the verbal joke, but I feel like visually they're making the joke that Sunny almost sat on her mom's face. Because, <laughs> like, she didn't sit directly on, you know, it's we can see Rosie's face when she sits there. And she's so freaked, you know, she, she has to get up and, and, you know, and, yeah, you know, uh, it's going to take us, what did she say, 19 hours to get there. 19 hours? You know, Lupe is like, that's not, that. there's no way. Goes why are you looking at the bicycle, you know, number? we don't have a car. And, you know, the, and, and just the way that it's shot, like the, you know, you can tell that the fact, you know, that the, you know, yeah, taking mom's car would be a huge deal. You know, it, it's completely clear. Let's see if I can, yeah, the, the, um, yeah, Lupe says, yeah, we do, about car, and it's smash cuts to the car, and it's taking up almost the entire frame. You know, it's it's like this this almost monstrous, thing. like, it's, it's, um, yeah, you know, the, and, yeah, just, we know immediately that's gonna go badly. <laughs> And, I, you know, maybe if the movie had a bigger budget, the car would have ended up actually getting wrecked instead of just a little muddy. You know, oh, okay, maybe a lot muddy, but muddy, you know, not, not wrecked. Um, let's see. And I really appreciate, you know, you're not alone. We're, we're together in this. You know, and they're, they're driving and, you know, changing radio stations because it's, you know, South Dakota. A lot of the radio stations are going to be super conservative and you know and and you know Sonny sits and listens and, is that Christian trap and like I don't that's those are not words that I needed to hear ever in my life but the it, it, rap is a beautiful thing hip-hop is one of the best genres of music and I do not approve of conservatives trying to to take it away from marginalized groups it is specifically the voice of the people it is not the voice of the establishment but yeah you know they know that it, they can use that to appeal to to people who just yeah and like you know sunny listens for a few seconds he's like i don't know i mean i guess it's you know it's not terrible and Lupe is like, I'm so glad you said that because I actually really love this, you know. And the the you know, um, yes. Yeah, so, so, and Sunny's like, who are you? You know, what what have yeah, what have you done with the the um? Let's see. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Sunny says, it's kind of good. And Lupe says, okay, good, because I secretly love this song so much. And Sunny, it's so fucking good, dude. And Sunny's eyes, like, if she, if, if Lupe had said, I'm an alien, I am from Mars, Sunny's eyes would not have been wider than the, they are in response to that. And then we realize that Lupe knows all the words and can rap along. And, like, she gets down. She loves this thing. And, and yeah, Sunny... <laughs> yeah. And, and yeah, you know, Sunny is like, oh, so you know all the words to it. And then Lupe is like, oh, yeah, you will too. And then it cuts to later... And yeah, she's she's listened to it over and over, and now she's really getting into the, you know, she's, the the lyrics, yeah. <laughs> and let's see the the. Yeah, and and the you know, yeah, Lupe wants to talk about the. 
the the sex and let's see yeah um yeah, now that we're sitting in the car for hours alone, why don't you tell me about your sexual awakening, Lupe says. And, you know, yeah, Sonny says it's not a big deal. And Lupe says, are you being weird about it? Because he was weird. Did he keep his cardigan on? That's really funny. Does he have, like, a giant hairy birthmark on his dick? Oh my god, did you fuck on your mom's bed? On your bed, did you have that little stuffed elephant just staring right at you? Was it, like, involved in the action or something? And, you know, yeah, and Sonny's like, dude, stop, like, trying to shut it down. And Lupe is like, there's something wrong. Wait, was it bad? Did he do something to you? I'll fucking kill him. I really love that that's, like, you know, she... She can accept that, that like, you know, when, when when Sunny has nothing positive to say about it, you know, she's like, oh, was it bad? Did he do something? You know, just that that's where her mind goes. And she's like, I, I believe her, you know, honestly, like if the 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 um, yeah, if they make like a sequel to this and like. You know, I, I could imagine, you know, then Sonny and Hunter could be, like, together, as, as, like, you know, for, for a while. And, and, you know, you could have, like, a thing where Lupe admits to her, ad admits to him, you know, there was a time when I very briefly thought that you had done something to her when you had sex. And, you know, and, and like, maybe she describes what she would do to him, or there's, like, a little, if they have a bigger budget, maybe, like, an animated, or by action, but, like, a, a brief, like, glimpse of her going through with whatever she's thinking. Because, like, yeah, it's, it's great. I really love how much they love each other. And... Let's see. Yeah, I... When when the GPS was like, yeah yeah you know they they drive you know and says merge into what was I ninety, it's blocked. And you know the GPS yeah, take the exit, bitch I can't. And you know yeah Lupe is like we'll just take the next one. And. We go to later, let's see, the, um, yeah, we've been driving around in circles for an hour. I have had a similar experience. We didn't end up, like, driving for, like, ever, but there was, let's see, I swear I'm not going to spend forever on this, but, but, yeah, there was, like, the GPS said you can just do that, you know, and okay we'll we'll do that and when we got a little further there you know there there was like a construction block or something like that so okay i guess we got to go a little further back and the person i was driving with i guess forgot because it it took a little you know it took 20 minutes or something to get back to to where it was and then when the gps said take a turn you know just take this exit i was like um I think that didn't go so well last time because I was trying to be polite because like in my mind I was going are we gonna go through this again because I don't think this is necessary I don't think we're gonna get a different outcome this time so I was like maybe maybe let's keep going a little further and we were lucky enough that that you know it was a place where the GPS not a huge you know not not it didn't take forever before there was another exit but yeah you know and they end up in a dead zone, and, the, you know, them trying to use the map, and they actually, they were looking at the wrong, um, what's it called, the, um, the wrong, ah, crap, they were looking at the wrong, uh, the wrong state, you know, and, and Lupe's like, you know, you know, you can, you know, Westeros, like the back of your hand, but you don't know your own state, you know, it's just, yeah. And 
let's see. Yeah, I, I like the, the detail that, you know, they're, they're at the, the uh, gas station and, you know, the, the, these guys, let's see. Oh, that's right. Yeah, they, yeah, they say, this really needs a pinch and zoom, they say about the, the map. Okay, that was a little bit of a boomer joke. I'm not going to lie. That was, yeah. I don't know. I, I get it, it was it was okay. I guess as long as the you know there there weren't a, a million of those, but that did feel a little like something a boomer would say about a millennial. But or or I guess they're not even millennials. They're the next generation, which I did. Uh, yeah. Um. But yeah, you know the the guys who can't call them at the 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 gas station, you know they show respect to a veteran, and it's like. So you're not incapable of respect, then. That's what you're, that's what, you know. And, yeah, you know, and they, they go in and they get directions. And it's just... I really love this joke of, you know, because the, the uh, Doris is like, you don't know the, the you know, as like, no, we, we sure don't. That's why we're in here asking for directions. We, we actually need, yeah, and he's like, He's the only person around here who grows dent corn instead of sweet corn. And she's, you know, and, and yeah, crazy. You know, that's like, how can you even, that's just, yeah. And the, yeah, the, the, let's see. Oh, God. Yeah, yeah, the, um, There's the, the, there's a few houses with bullet holes in them. Oh my god. And the, just, yeah. Um, and the, the, yeah, yes, you know. If you've got time, I don't know if you have it, but if you have time, get up in that doll museum. You're gonna love it. It's beautiful, and then she says she got married there, and they're like, congrats, and she's like, ah, uh, actually no, because, and she explains that he split in half because of the, just, yeah, and, you know, I, I gotta admit, the moment that Lupe showed the, the BFF, what was it, not necklace, but bracelet, I, I guess, it went a little too... I, I didn't quite pick up, but yeah, apparently bracelets, you know, the moment that I saw them, I was like, so she shoplifted, but it didn't take forever before the movie revealed that she shoplifted and the, you know, they're, they're back out and the, the guys are, you know, catcalling them and they become, you know, downright threatening and like the, the, let's see. See, she and yeah, yeah. The the you know so so Sunny says I you know she yeah she's gonna she's gonna pee on him because that's you know she she read that that you know deters you know sexual predator yeah holy crap they're they're like approach just holy crap. Yeah, they're they're getting really really creepy and and threatening. And yeah, she says, "If you take one step closer, I'll pee on you." I saw a TED talk that says that peeing discourages sexual assault. I intend on peeing you, and I don't miss, Bucko. And then they start like saying, "Ah, oh, she's not going to be able to do it," and and she tries to to make herself do it, and they're like. Oh, she's gonna pass out. Pee on my face right now. Holy shit! And Doris comes out. Philip Peterson. As I live and breathe, I thought that was you. We know each other. And and you know the other guy is like, you know Doris, and and he you know he's like, she knows my mom. I'll tell her I said hi. No no d don't no. And and then you know the other guy he's like well if she doesn't know my mom why don't you shut the fuck up biatch and laughs and you know la you know look at her face did Randy Quaid lose weight 
Because he's crazy enough. He looks as crazy as this guy does, but I don't think he's... That's not fat phobic. I'm just saying Randy Quaid is heavier than this guy. That's all. And she gets out the bat. And suddenly they want to talk about it. You know, that's, okay, let's... And she starts smashing up, you know, she smashes up one of the one of the lights on it, and country music is playing. And I'm like, holy shit! It's a, it became, you know, it's a, it's a. Um, I'm gonna really quickly get the name of the. Yeah, it's a, it's a, it's a Carrie Underwood song, and and just amazing. And it's. <laughs> Yeah, um, the, the, yeah, she gets them to leave, and he yells, Doris don't, he says, Doris don't tell my mom. <laughs> Let's see, and, yeah, you know, the, the, the see, we find, yeah, we, we find out that the reason she brought the bat was because she realized that they stole the, the, the the laces you know and just just yeah and the <laughs> yeah and and she says you know she'll 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 trade a few hits off of that for the friendship crystals that you stole <laughs> and the just, yeah the, yeah that's why I came out with the bat and they're like holy shit don't you know and the you know and and she she puts down the bat and says you know we'll be even Stevens and yeah she's doing marijuana and she explains about you know the the she, yeah she explains about a guy who sells oxycontin at what did she say Ca Canada prices or something like that because healthcare is ridiculously expensive in America. Uh, and, and yeah, she points out some doctors just won't prescribe it, which like, for sure, oxy is over over prescripted, but sometimes people actually need it, you know. And you get the sense from this woman, no, she does actually, she, you know, you don't get the sense that she's like doing oxy for kicks. And let's see, yeah, and and the. That's right. Yeah, her nephew Andy, and you know when they when they get there, he's like, you know, uh, let's see if I can, I'll quick get. Yeah, he's like, you know, what do you want? And they're like, we're looking for Andy. His aunt Dora sent us here. And she's like, oh, Auntie D, we can, yeah, if she says you're cool, we can do that business. I mean, hey, not everybody is, like, there to, pop, there to buy something. You can't be too careful. It's, it's a good thing to have your, your aunt, who calls marijuana weedsy deedsy, it's it's good to have her to to check your your clients, but I'm I'm sure honestly he probably gets a lot of clients from you know people who walk in there and end up asking for for help with drugs. That's that's I'm sure he has. This is a great business model for him, is is what I'm getting at. And you know yeah he's he says he actually sells a lot of Plan B. The, the, let's see, the, 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 yeah, a lot of girls getting seeded up like to put the yogurt right in the cup. Wow. See, the thing I value most about him is that he is very, he, he has so much tact you know he is he is the the you know who wouldn't trust the the drug dealer who uses the the kids playground to yeah and and you know he the pill is loose 
you know, and he's like, no, 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 it's, it's definitely, I'm sure it's, a, or speed, there's, there's like a really small chance it might be PCP. Let's see, and, yeah, you know, the, the, she's like, okay, I'm not taking that chance, but, you know, by the, the, yeah, and it later does turn out to be PCP. And the, yeah, um, yeah, he keeps un underlining, it's really small chance it's PCP. And the, let's see, yeah, yeah, the, the, <laughs> I smoked two of these, I saw God look like a rat. And the, yeah, yeah, he said, yeah. Fake IDs, and they decide, you know, oh, we could go to a 24-hour pharmacy, and you know, it turns out that the the it's completely hopeless. But yeah, the the um, let's see, <laughs> yeah, he's got you know a bunch of fake IDs, and thinks he has one that looks just like her, and the the let's see, yeah, um. The, um, yeah, he, he doesn't want a hit off the vape. Because vape kills. I don't fuck with vapes. That shit will kill you. And, you know, he, he starts out saying 300 for the fake ID. And then he says 400. You know, now, now that I know that you really want it, I can raise prices is because fuck capitalism, goddamn. Yeah, and and the yeah, and and he says, you know, and and they're like, you know, I'm I'm 17, and he's yeah, I don't know what to tell you, supply and demand, okay, and the let's see, he yeah yeah the the. <laughs> Yeah, he, he, you know, I, don't worry, I'm not going to act it out. But he, he does the, he mimes a blowjob. And, you know, yeah, they, they, you know, right away they say no. You know, and, and, you know, one of them says, I'm 17, we're both 17, what the fuck? And he says, dude, so am I. I just have, like, literally never drank water in my life. <laughs> wow. And, let's see... Um, yeah, yeah, the, the, you know, Lupe says they can't possibly do this, and, yeah, you know, the, the, um, yeah, so I, I already mentioned that it's, it's a messed up joke, but I'm, I'm still gonna have a few more comments on, you know, the, the, um, yeah, Lupe is like, we, we can find another way, and Sonny is like, <laughs> the, the, yeah, yeah, the, the, you know, she's gonna, like, we're running out of options, I gotta do it, and he's like, okay, if it's any consolation, it's gonna be, like, so fast. I, I don't think that helped much, um, and the, <laughs> Yeah, the, you know, after a while, Lupe says, "No, no, I'll, I'll do it." You know, and the, the, you know, and yeah, she's, yeah, Sunny says no. Lupe says, "I will." Yeah, I love you. We're in this together. I'm gonna suck his dick. I'm not gonna let you suck his dick. Uh, let's see, and. Yeah, Lupe says, it doesn't mean anything to me. And then Andy, like, I I commend his timing. He, you know, he, he jumps right in. I believe in her. She could do it. And they're both like, just shut up. Holy shit, dude. Don't, that's, yeah. <laughs> and, and the, the, yeah, they both... They they argue over it and in you know 
yeah, you know, at, at the the yeah, you know, Sunny says, "Just don't judge me," and Lupe says, "I would never." And then Andy says, "Oh shit, that's a good ass friend." And yeah, they they hug, and she she goes to do it. And <laughs> I'm here if you need me. And the <laughs> let's see, and and yeah. Just don't skull fuck me, okay? And he says, I can't even move my pelvis like that. Which is sadly probably true, you know. A lot of... He's probably one of the drug dealers who, who did a bunch of the drugs himself. So, yeah, very, very likely true. Let's see. And, um... Yeah, I, I, the shot where she, like, approaches it is really, really funny. Right. Uh, some some people are unclear. You know, some some people guess it's probably prosthetic. I I think so. I you know I'm not even sure. Are are you even allowed to show? Uh, won't it like get an automatic NC17, which pretty much kills any chance? You know. Yeah. I'm pretty sure it's it's prosthetic. And and the you know yeah. There's a there's a piercing. And he said, oh yeah, there was so much blood at Claire's. He got it pierced at, pierced at Claire's. That's that's just amazing. And and he says, you know, I hate it, but it feels really good for the ladies. You'll see. And just the, yeah, the shot of her slowly approaching. Again, like it looks like something out of a horror movie. You know, the, the way she slow, it, it's like she's... Like, she's going close to something that she doesn't know is dangerous, but the audience does. Like, she's checking out a weird noise or something, you know. And the... Yeah, you know, her... her. Let's see, I think it's... Is it her hair that, that catches it and rips it out? And the... You know, and he, he goes running after them because he's, you know... It does make sense, and, and yeah, also that, you know, I don't have, I have no idea what I'm doing. Pretend like you're eating a banana, but don't use your teeth. Yeah, definitely don't use your teeth. Wow. But the, yeah, the, um, <laughs> yeah, it's, it's in her hair. They're all screaming, and the, <laughs> yeah, and she, she really badly wants to get it out of her hair. And then, you know, and she's, and he's like, holy shit, you're dead. And of course, you know, yeah, that's right. And Lupe runs back and gets the, the pill and the ID because she's, she's good in a bad situation. And just, yeah, the, the, um, yeah, you know, he, he's like, his pants are around his ankles and it hurts a lot. So he's like slow in, in getting after them, and they start driving away, and, you know, you see, yeah, you see him running, and he, he's scary close to catching up to them, just, yeah, he never manages, we, we don't actually see him put his pants back on, which, I'm not in the business of giving advice to, you know, yeah, people who were in this situation, but that might be a, a decent place to start. Let's see, and the, yeah, and they look at the ID and they say, it's, you know, this guy's like 60, and the, you know, and mom calls, and she says she loved her, she's kisses, but only after you do the, the PSAT, not, don't cheat and start having them before, you know, and, and, yeah, she's like, you know, I I can't believe, you know, my mom thinks I'm a saint and I'm doing this, you know. And, you know, she it's she's been driving for hours and Lupe's like I I should drive, you know, and apparently she she went out like a light immediate as soon as she, you know, and Lupe drives to where the band is because it's not that far off and they have time because they got it they gotta wait for parent Planned Parenthood to open in the morning anyway you know the ID didn't work out no 24-hour pharmacy Planned Parenthood you know they they're they're closed at that point in the day and as we find out later 
permanently. So, yeah. And, you know, Lupe is nervous, says Logan is special, and, you know, we do later find out, no, legitimately, like, she hasn't actually been with very many, you know, she, yeah, she's been with, like, one person. And the, I love that the Indian Mafia, again, this is, this could so easily be, like, this really obnoxious, like, you know, saying that, oh, all, like, Indian, you know, uh, uh, adults are awful. But the guy at the place, he's, he recognizes, you know, he's like, she's Indian. And both of them think that the other person is going to, you know, tell, you know, yeah, other Indian people, I saw them at the bowling alley, you know. So, so yeah, that's such a great, it's just, yeah, you know. He's not supposed to be there either. So, so yeah. And turns out Hunter is there because of the music. And it just, it's a, it's a great little, yeah. And, and honestly, the music is good. You know, I'd, I'd listen to this stuff. And I gotta say, I did not expect, like, apparent, like, one of the guys is like, I gotta go poop. Hunter, you want to come with? And Hunter's like, I'm gonna have to pass. It's a, it's a very, I'm not gonna lie, it's a, it's a, you know, it has its appeal, but no, and, and the other guy does go with, I, is that supposed to be like a gender reverse? Because I thought, like, there's a stereotype about women going to the bathroom together. I've never heard of guys going to the bathroom together. Yeah, I, I don't know. It's, maybe there's something I'm missing. I, I don't mind the joke, but I just didn't... I don't think I really understood it. Uh, unless it's just that, you know, oh, you wouldn't expect... You would expect girls to do that, not guys. Yeah. And the... Um, you know, Hunter and... Uh, yeah, Hunter offers... It's, uh, yeah. You know, Son Sunny is... is uh, yeah, I mean, at this point, she probably thinks that, you know, there's no chance, but... You know, Hunter is like, so, you want to dance T together? Like, with you? <laughs> Adorable. And, you know, she he explains, you know, they, they didn't, he wasn't with, with Megan. They didn't, they didn't hook up. You know, she, she vomited, and it's going to take forever to get glitter vomit out of it. <laughs> Just, yeah, and, and, you know, it's like, so, sorry that the window can't, yeah, but it's good for the smell. Yeah, yeah, really. It's, it. You know, it's it's staying that that smell. It's just, yeah, and the, I think some of Sonny's moves were like Bollywood, so that's great. You know, and and you know, Hunter's like down for that. That he doesn't say like that's the, there's something wrong. So that's the thing. Like when when things get bad, you you know try to try to keep people close to you that are going to be there for you. You know, that's I feel like that's what the movie is saying more than oh this group of people are bad and and this group of people are good, you know. At the end of the day, the you know, pa Pastor Pedro and Rosie do come through for for the girls and you know, Kyle is is certainly trying. Um yeah, Hunter really like you know, does yeah, the the whole you know they they sit and and eat together and the whole you know he comments on the the you know the the tomato but you know he's not like I can't believe you know he he doesn't you know it doesn't make him leave or something let's see and Lupe let's, yeah Lupe has the the keys and and we find out that Logan is female and you know I guess I mean I guess she's bisexual I'm honestly now I'm rem now I'm, uh, was the other person also female because she says she was worried about being thought of as lesbian yeah I'm, I'm not entirely sure um you know she's she's not straight. She's she's gay or bi or, or pan. And yeah, you know, she does really feel for for Logan and she offers them the car, which is, you know, immediately we can tell that's going to go badly. And 
you know, she tells Logan that she thinks it's brave of her to wear the pin. And let's see. Oh, yeah, there's there's only two goofs. One of them is that, you know, when they're driving into Rapid City, South Dakota, the city in the background is actually the downtown area of Syracuse, New York. So, yeah. Um, so, let's see. While, uh, yeah, this is listed as a miscellaneous goof. While Logan's character wears a pin, which from the context of the film appears to be intended to represent gay pride or something similar as a rainbow infinity symbol, it is at the t at time of filming and release currently more closely associated with autism and general neurodiversity than any sexual orientation. So, I mean, yeah, maybe, I yeah, I guess they did... <sighs> Yeah, it it seems to it seems like in the film, it is meant to be about LGBT. Um, let's see. And yeah, you know the reason that uh, Lupe is closeted is that you know, Pastor Pedro, is, has been very strict since her mom died. And, you know, the, the, yeah, apparently, um, Sonny and Hunter both like anime and, um, you know, she says, it's my complicated palate, you wouldn't understand, or something like that about the, the, the food. And yeah, I think it's basically there to, so that he can say that his sister is pregnant, you know, that's basically the yeah yeah so you know it's not the the you know based on context like I, I, honestly the moment that i heard it i thought oh there's like a there's a couple of years between them no based on the the rest of the conversation you know she yeah yeah and that's why he knows that she does that because they still live yeah she still lives in their parents house you know and she's pregnant and they're not gonna like get an abortion or something so or and they didn't use plan b and, and such so yeah you know it is a problem let's see and you know he's he creates mr waffles and says he's a great listener and it's it's such a great because it is the thing of just you know like you know it and and that's again like if you are in a bad situation, find someone who will listen to you. Before anything else, just listen to you. Let you tell, and you know, that's the, I, I really appreciate, like, you know, Hunter, like, he's the, the, you know, he's, he's, like, cool and conventionally attractive and, and good at sports and such, but he also listens and he doesn't judge. You know, it's like he comments on the, the thing with the, the, the food, but like, yeah, you know, he doesn't say, I can't believe, you know, like, like he doesn't say, I, I just lost my appetite or some, some kind of, you know, really, but, but yeah, you know, creating Mr. Waffles is, is a way for her to feel, and, and some of the time he holds it up in front of his face as like a thing of, you know, it's it's okay, you know, just like you he can tell that she needs to talk and he does what he can to you know, and yeah, she she confesses a lot and you know, he says slut is a be is a bullshit double standard 100%. Again, you know, this is like any any young man who's like, "Oh, you know, I don't know how am I supposed to be as a man today? I'm not saying that there's absolutely no validity to that. I just can't help but notice that a lot of people don't necessarily want to be like, if like, they don't want to be a man the way their father was a man. They want to be a man in a way that means they get to have a lot of casual sex. And it's like, I, that's not, that's not a crisis. It's not a crisis that you don't think you're having enough casual sex. That's just, Gonna gonna stop you right there, um, but yeah, there is some truth to it. There is there are some people who feel like they don't know how to to be. You know what? I'm gonna I'm gonna make sure to put. I forget. It was it was a video by that dang dad. 
um, let's see, yeah, yeah, he made, uh, he made two videos, 25 tips to make men happier, and is the left failing men, I'm gonna go ahead and put those links in the description box also, um, so, so yeah, instead of me restating a lot of what he said there, that's, you know, there we go, and the other one was this one, and there we go. I guess I'll go ahead and put them here immediately. And there we go. One thing, like, take your cue from, from movies like this, guys like Hunter. Like, that is how you are a good young man in today's world. Let's see. And I really appreciate, you know, he, he was intimidated by her intelligence. But he was also attracted to it, you know. That that's a really great, and that is actually true, you know. The the it's a it's a it's not true that straight men are not attracted to intelligence in women. Some of us are intimidated by it, but like, you know, I've 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 not had a huge amount of partners, but like they were they were women that I was like this person is smart you know this is a person that I can have conversations with like I can't even imagine have an ongoing relationship with someone that I couldn't have an intelligent conversation with and yeah it's it's a it's a stereotype that men don't just you know straight up do not want a smart woman so you know some do some do but again Find you a guy that appreciates, you know, because that is, she is intelligent, and that is who she wants to be, so, yeah, it's, you know, she, she, she ends up in a, you know, they, they basically start dating by, by the end of the movie, and, yeah, she's with someone who respects that intelligence, and that's also, you know, we saw earlier, you know, he actually, when she spoke up in, during sex ed, you know, he he was like, yeah, exactly. Thank you, and he built on it. You know, the the so the the just yeah, you know, and and yeah, honestly, that's probably why she was attracted. You know, it wasn't just the you know that he's conventionally attractive. It you know, I can imagine that there have been other times where he said something in class that showed that he you know he thinks about things. He's not just, yeah. Let's see. Um, yeah, the the couples together are both very very sweet, and you know, kissing in in the car and just and I love the bit where like you know oh you know I I parked the car over there and they walk. The car is missing. Well, thanks, Sherlock. <laughs> and let's see. Yeah, um, Lupe's phone was in the car, and. You know, um, Sonny didn't get Hunter's phone number, and yeah, she goes ahead and and takes the the Plan B slash PCP. You know, yeah, it it really is like how how do you just at this point she's desperate, you know, and they have an exchange about being a shitty friend, and you know, I I think both of them are trying to be a good friend. They 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 care, you know, and we find out it is in fact PCP, and that's, you know, she's, she starts talking, talking really fast, and, like, you know, she's like, why are you in slow motion, you know, and this is also a thing where I think if the movie had a, at least a slightly bigger budget, there would probably have been some, like, POV, you know, she's high kind of stuff, but I didn't think that the movie was, like, screaming out for something like that. Let's see. Like, let's hypothetically say that there wasn't sex in it. I think that would have felt, you know, the, I think there is enough drug content and, and it's sufficiently funny for the, the movie. Let's see. And, um, yeah, you know, they walk into the party and, like, we, the viewer, like, 
this is a bad place to be. And Lupe is like, okay, this is not, you know, and Sonny is missing. And I gotta say, when, you know, Doug walks up, what are you two doing in my house? And Lupe is like, you know, okay, we can, I'm, I'm sure we can, we can, we can fix this or something. And like, Sonny just goes, stay the, f yeah, yeah, Lupe is trying to, to say, you know, some people we, we're looking for maybe, may have been at this party. And it was just a funny thing that happened. And Sonny turns, wide eyes, you know what, Doug? Stay the fuck out of it. It's none of your business. And there's a, like, there's a couple of seconds where they're just staring directly at each other with bug eyes. And then he starts laughing. And he's like, and, and it's like, yeah, it was actually the exact right solution to the thing. You know, and he's like, I can see you're full of shit, and you thought I was full of shit. It's just, yeah, that's, that's so, yeah. And, let's see. Yeah, and, and Logan explains, and it is, like, you know, it is a reasonable, the, the, yeah. And, and she goes, you know, Xander, I guess he's playing hide-and-seek. I haven't seen him anywhere. And I love the line, I'm really good at hide-and-seek. Let's see, and, and, you know, they almost go into the place, and they're like, you know what? Too scary. This place is too scary. It's just... And the and the bit where they're like the moths are flying into the fire and they don't know that they're gonna die and it's sad <laughs> and the the you know they find Xander he's like up against a window and he's gotten really paranoid because he's done something that Doug gave him and. So, yeah, you know, he's like, you're, you're Yoko Ono, you're trying to break up the band. And, you know, he's like, those crystals, are those meth? Because, you know, in his mind, everything, everything right now is either a drug or someone trying to ruin everything. You know, just, the, and, and that's, a, that's an accurate depiction of, like, drug. Like, he can't imagine anything less than, I can get even higher, or, you're trying to destroy everything. You know, just... Those are, yeah, that's, I really appreciate that that's just, yeah, you know, he's not like, I don't know, eating people or something, you know, it's, it, it made him really paranoid, and also, like, he really badly wants more, he, wa he wants to get even higher, you know, that's, there are, there are drugs that do that, you know, so it's, it's not some kind of, you know, war on drugs propaganda bullshit that tries to make it seem like every drug is going to turn you fucking insane or something. And, yeah, he's like, are those meth? And, you know what? Yeah, this, this, this is meth. And we'll trade the car keys for the, you know. And so he smashes through the window. It's like, ah, ah, you know, and, and blood. And, you know, they, they get the keys and he gets the, the, just... And then they're, you know, trying to get through mud. And, you know, the, the, yeah, they have to walk carefully and slowly. And that's another thing where, like, okay, that, it would not just be mud if the movie had a bigger budget, you know. But mud is easy to do. You know, yeah, easy to do, safe to do, not a, a huge hassle to do. So, so, yeah. Um, let's see... And, and, yeah, I'm, I mean, honestly, I'm really relieved that it wasn't, like, shit or something. Like, oh, they're close to a farm, so there's, like, cow shit or horse shit or something. That would have been just... I, I feel like that would have been going too far. But, yeah, the mud, you know, it's, it's, it's funny. And he calls her Yoko again. And, you know, he gets all... They get into the car, and, like, the the... Let's see. Yeah, and they're having trouble getting it. Yeah, driving away. And oh my god, he does. He really does look like he looks like a like part way done. Like he, he looks like he's getting into costume to play the a, a yeti or something. It's just yeah. 
and and you know the the and and Lupe like let's see it's the yeah yeah she she rolls down the the window do you want to get fucking murdered unlock the window and then you know she gets the <laughs> and his hand is in, and it does it looks like something out of a horror movie and she gets the crystal did you ever, go get it get it go get it you know just like like playing fetch but yeah because that's the thing he's interested in you know it's again she's she's really good in a in a bad situation she she can come up with these ideas that just yeah and then they accidentally you know drive the car into xander and just yeah you're covered in mud and blood mud and blood that rhymes we could we should use that uh, we could use that just yeah um let's see and the yeah they talk about you know well it was it was a memorable first date it wasn't how we had hoped it would go holy shit i have been going for almost four and a half hours because i fucking love this movie and i have a lot to say i'm gonna i'm gonna see if i can't spit all the, you know the, so when were you gonna tell me at your wedding <laughs> and the let's see you know and and you know did you you know I, you know, I was scared it would be weird between us, and I love you, I fucking love you! Okay, maybe there's a little speed left, I'm in and out. <laughs> and, and Kyle calls, and he talks about, you know, it, that was two sins, and it's just, and it's so great, because, like, at this point, Lupe still thinks that it was Hunter, you know, and, and he's, like, not only does he say, you know, I, I, we had sex, but he also said, I accidentally put it, it it's just yeah and yeah both girls come clean and yeah lupe apparently she says she only had sex one time but claims that she's had a lot of sex so she wouldn't be thought of as lesbian and you know she accepts the the nickname fruit loops and yeah we see planned parenthood closed down which yeah and you know we see the several empty rooms and yeah, really appreciate it. And, you know, this is one of those where, ultimately, the road trip didn't solve their problem, but it, you know, they they changed as people. The, the people went on the, the road trip. And uh, I guess that's... I'll just say I've seen that done in other movies. And it is very funny. As, as long as something happens that makes it feel... I, I Like, by the end of the movie, yeah, you know, yes, she could have just gone to her mother and says... I was denied plan B, but they grew as people, you know, she's a, yeah, so, so it, it wasn't that it shouldn't have happened, it's, uh, yeah, and, and, you know, Kyle calls and he says, you know, God loves everyone, uh, even if you almost do butt sex, I think they should put that on the, on the sign outside the church. God loves you, even if you almost do butt sex. And the and he invites to the town chair again. It's just you know, which which I you know, a is funny. Two is also just just like you know, things are back to normal. He's 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 his old self again. He was freaked out for a while. He's, and, and that is the thing, like, as long as there was no, you know, as long as the, you know, S, no STD, no, no, like, uh, uh, pregnancy or that kind of thing, and as long as both of, as long as the people involved in the sex are emotionally okay afterwards, then it's fine, you know, it's, it's completely just, so, so, yeah, I really appreciate that, and the movie actually does go into, it can be traumatic for a, a guy, you know, if, if, you know, it'll, it, yeah, because of society imposed values, you know, the, the, like, if, if the, you know, for for women, you know, some women are are happy to have casual sex, and that's great. There's nothing wrong with that. Again, just use protection. That's the, literally the only thing. Consent protection. That's it. Um, the the um, but but yeah, you know, the ones that are are you know uh, are not comfortable with casual sex, 
a lot of the time it's society imposed values you know the the yeah let's see and then we have the um Yeah, we find out that Lupe's father was actually worried. And he says, I, I kept thinking of all these crazy scenarios that I thought. you And she's like, ah, no. No crazy situations. You know, and and the, the yeah, like, it's, it's um, what's the word? The, mm, crap, what's the word? You know, basically, the the that's another thing where, like, if they had a bigger budget, I can imagine there would be, like, a short animated sequence, or maybe live action, and, and the, you know, and she would act out something that he thought happened, you know, it, Victoria Morales would act out something that he thought happened, but in actuality didn't happen. Um, but, but again, it the movie wasn't you know, didn't need it, and, you know, she's like, please promise you, you'll never kick me out, and, you know, he says, you know, no, n never, even if you killed someone, I'd have to call your cousin to tell him to bury the body, your mom would never let me hear the end of it, but I'd, you know, oh, yeah, yeah, when, when he, when he prays, to, and, and talks to his wife that way, you know, she would be like, I can't believe, do I have to do everything around here? I'm dead, and now she's killing. You know, I, I knew it. I, it, it was, you know, let's see, and, you know, he says, nice pin, and it's like, does that mean that he knows, does he know what the pin means, or does he know what the movie thinks the pin means, or, yeah. And the, you know, we get the Indian Mafia thing again because, yeah, the, the guy did say that, you know, he saw her. And, and it got back to her. Like, <laughs> you know, some someone managed to, to get, you know, it's it, maybe that guy didn't know her or Rosie, but he contacted someone else and, you know... Yeah, it got through. Yeah, I guess the, they're the, the... In this movie, they call them the Indian Mafia. I guess in Ms. Marvel, the, the Illuminantes are the... That's that's the equivalent of the... Yeah. And, uh, uh, right, if you haven't watched Ms. Marvel, um, ants. Not not the not the Ant-Man kind, but the A-U-N-T kind of ant. You know, gossiping and talking about... Uh, yeah. Uh, let's see, and, yeah, I really like the conversations between the parents, and, you know, we find out Rosie actually, you know, she, she had a difficult relationship with her mom, and she said, she talked at me, never with me, I don't want our relationship to be like that, and that's, again, the problem is not conservative individual people, the problem is conservative individual, you know, the problem is the, the system, and conservative individuals who refuse to embrace, like, if you, you know, some some people don't like me, that's fine. You don't have to take my word for it. Do the research. If you actually, if you actually look into it, do the do the real research. Is what I'm saying. Do the do the research like Sonny would. You will find out that. It is healthier, it is better for people to listen and to understand and to to actually, you know, be there for people. Don't, instead of judging them and rejecting them, you know, Lupe even said, you know, Pastor Pedro is the, the you know, he's he's like, why would I, why would I kick you out? And Lupe points out, some, you know, some families do reject teenagers, you know, and that that is a that is a thing that happens, and that's something we really have to stop doing, because it's not good for anyone. Like, short of literal murder, don't reject your 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 family. 
let's see. Um, yeah, and, and the thing that bothers Rosie is that she was refused the Plan B pill. You know, the, the Sunny says, okay, so I, I, you know, yeah, she says about the, the sex and the, let's see, I'm going to see if I can find really quickly. Um... Yeah, Rosie also says her mother decided everything for her. Let's see. So the... Yeah, she says, I need a morning after pill. I need the car because I need the car to go to the closest Planned Parenthood, which is very far away. I tried to get it at a pharmacy here, but the pharmacist refused to sell me the pill, so I tur it turned into a wild goose chase. Wait. That's the moment. You know, like when when Rosie hears that her 17-year-old daughter needs a morning after pill. She's like, okay, go on. She She's not like, I can't believe it. She's just, okay, pro proceed. Nearest Planned Parenthood, okay, needed the car. Refused, you were refused the pill. You know, that's the thing. What do you mean he refused you? Smash cut and, you know, at the pharmacy again. And she says, I need the Plan B pill. For my daughter's friend <laughs> and it cuts and we see you know sunny rosie and lupe because she could you know yeah if if she went in there and said my daughter needs a plan b pill or i need a plan b pill you know it like she's still worried that that he's going to tell someone so yeah very very funny um let's see and and that's you know again she, what's the word? Um, uh, let's see. Yeah, the the um, what's it called? Um, you know, again, that's a that's. Yeah, that's how how parents should be listening and and helping and and such, and you know, there's a lot of pressures on on parents. But if you can at all, if you, if, you know, try to, to be that way, um, you know, when, when, and, you know, there were definitely times where my mother listened and my father, yeah, um, sometimes listens. Not as, not as frequently as I would maybe like, but he tries. Um, and then he also had a very uh, hard father. Uh, and he's a much better father than his father was. Anyway, the, the, yeah, so the, yeah, it ends with the, the three of them in the car. And, you know, yeah, Rosie says, you are both cleaning all this mud in here. It's a total mess. And then she looks at the floor and finds the ring that, you know, earlier, like, Lupe was looking for it. Um... On, on the, the floor at, at one point in the movie, but ended up not finding it, and just, you know, yeah, they got away from it, and, yeah, picks up the ring, and says, what's this? And they're like, and, and, <laughs> Sunny's eyes again, ah, you know, and, and then she smells it, and smash cut to end credits, and just, yeah, because that's like, you know, she's not going to, like, lick it. That would just, what? But she smells it because she's going to investigate. Like, so, and, and, you know, Sonny and Lupe are not saying what this is. So just, and, and yeah, the, the size of the ring could maybe make you think that that's, that wasn't in someone's ear, I don't think. Because of the, you know, because it's like a, a uh, you know, it doesn't, it doesn't connect completely. It's a, it's, you know, how... Yeah, half a half a ring kind of thing. So she smells it, and we are spared the the reaction. And it's also just funnier to to cut to black. And man, I feel like a woman plays and just yeah. Um, I don't have a huge amount of notes left, which is good because this is the longest video that I've done in a while. And I am just gonna so let's see. So then there is the. I have a little bit left here. Let's see. There we go. Yeah. 
Um, yeah, not very much left. So, final section. Notes taken while watching. I spent almost two hours on the last section. So if you're still here, I am very grateful. I, I I hope this is entertaining for you. I'm trying to make it entertaining, but I did. Yeah. Um, let's see. Um, right. Yeah. Uh, some some critic quotes. It's a funny thing how all the overtop humorous antics that feel almost too in your face are also an effect, such an effective way to sh concretely show the extent to which a conscience clause can negatively impact someone's life. Take the moment when they meet the drug dealer, a scene at which I laughed but also got teary considering the lengths to which Sonny and Lupe were willing to go in, in order to get a pill that could be Plan B or could be PCP when they could have, and, and the rest of this is all caps, when they could have just gotten it down the fucking street at the local fucking pharmacy if not for the fucking patriarchy's mis directed moralizing and desire to control girls and women's bodies absolutely agreed along the way a friendship is tested secrets are revealed and a sweet touch unusual for the genre relationships with parents are strain strained but emerge strong stronger even than the Indian mafia it's absolutely beautiful how it comes back around to family and love in the end I found uh, let's see yeah so this person said that the the movie fell victim to misogynistic, fatphobic, racist stereotypes. Not a win for women. Disappointing for all the potential it had. So yeah, I don't really I I I'm not sure I really see the the misogynistic fatphobic. Like it it comments on race, but I'm I'm not sure I saw anything that that like came off as racist to me but again I you know if you can can tell please please let me know I I don't want to to be saying something positive about something that's actually racist Rachel Dratch in a really wonderful scene as a health teacher not ready for how smart her students are and how bad the used car as abstinence metaphor she's been given to teach is uh, this person says they use the they run off thing too often is only funny once and the movie yeah, I, I don't know. I thought it was great each time. Um, let's see. There's the tired trope of rapacious men cornering them. I mean, that's that happens, sadly. And until it is no longer happening, we have to call it out. They also employ food-based racism. The complicated palate bit? I mean, I feel like it's just... Isn't it just representation? I don't know. Uh, let's see. And this person, you know, the yeah. Um, there's a plot line that doesn't fit as well with the general theme of sexual repression as I assume it was intended to, like the lesbianism. I thought it completely fit in. I. Yeah, I I don't know. Like, are, are they saying that because the the two girls who are not straight, the the two LGBT girls are like comfortable expressing that to each other. That that's uh, not doesn't fit with sexual repression. That the, that they wouldn't be sexual. Yeah, I. Anyway, um, let's see. Um. Yeah, this is this is fascinating. Okay, so this Yeah. Quotes from a from a review. User review. Women good. Really? Like the the I suppose I'm not sure I can I can offhand think of a female character that by the end of the movie I didn't think there were at least some good things about, but certainly some of the women in this are introduced bullying the lead so communism good there is nothing in this that promotes communism that's literally not like again please enlighten me put it in the comment section I would be fascinated I guess he's saying that you can't criticize capitalism without promoting communism 
but even if you just want to like the criticisms of capitalism in this movie could largely be solved with regulation you don't have to completely disband I, okay i get I, re I realize i just lost some of the left more left leaning of the of you know but it's nearly the end of the video anyway i hope you still give it a like and subscribe but yeah um i don't think that we have to disband capitalism i think we have to heavily regulate anything that could be corrupted anything that could be you know but just yeah again like if you're a conservative watching this you realize how silly that sounds right that you can't criticize capitalism without being in favor of communism like just yeah and then they then this user review goes on to say men bad uh you mean except for hunter kyle ultimately you know pastor pedro like Sure, early on he seemed like really bad, but later I don't think there's a single man in this that is like bad. Yeah, yeah, the the pharmacist, uh, and and the yeah, the, obviously the the guys at the gas station, um, Andy. I okay, there are a couple of bad men, but there are also positive ones like. Hunter, straight up positive, all the way. Kyle, there's clearly a lot of empathy for him. Let's see. Religion bad. It's ruining countless women's lives that could be improved just with better sex ed and access to contraceptives. Yeah, that's bad. Main character has sex 20 seconds. Okay, so at least he's acknowledging that that's a bad thing. Oh, wait, no, never mind. And he, then he goes on. Then the moral is under say, underage sex is good. You just pointed out how bad the sex was. The movie says the teens will have sex with themselves if they can't with each other, with each other if they can, so give them proper sex ed and access to contraceptives. That's what it's... Like, this guy, like... Yeah, I'm pretty sure this is a guy. Just, you're, you're not proving the point you think you are. You're actually proving the opposite. And then he says, society bad, did I mention parents bad, bad all around? And again, the parents are not actually bad. Society bad, like, society needs adjustment, but it's not like saying, viva la revolution. Let's see. Uh, yeah, I don't know. I, part way through saying that, I, I decided, you know, I, I, I went from, from the... the it's probably good that the video is almost over. Uh, and the PCP is definitely completely out of my... In case you hadn't realized yet, yes, that was a joke at the start of the video. I That was hopefully clear enough. It would be pretty funny if someone d didn't reach the part of the video where I talked about the joke in the actual movie and like goes to the comment section trying to talk me out of my hard drug use. I've never even smoked a cigarette. I've never had any alcohol. So, no, you, you don't have to worry about, uh, you know, the, the, yeah, I'm, I'm, what, what, what do they call that? Straight edge? Uh, anyway, um, right, so, so the, the, um, yes, part way through, you know, I, I, as I was quoting the, the slogan, you know, I start out with a, with a, the, like the the um, I guess the the Italian pronunciation, and then I get get into the French. It's, yeah, I I think I my brain didn't switch all the way to French from the start, so I accidentally yeah. Anyway, um, let's see. Um, right, right, yeah. I'm sorry. This I I I. I'm going to do my back a favor and not spend forever on this, but this f just fascinating. Okay, so this person, I guess, was worried that, like, reviews get deleted if they, which, like, does that, does that actually happen on, like, I think, I'm pretty sure this is, like, a, um, yeah, this is an IMDB review. I've, I don't think I've ever heard 
like again, please correct me if I'm, I don't, I don't want to be repeating a falsehood. If people's reviews are getting deleted off IMDb for like commenting on politics, please you know put put the you know link me to to proof or, or an example or something you know and and I will start speaking out against that in videos. But I feel like I've I've seen people say that that happens, but I've never seen, like, I've, some of the things I've seen, like, I don't know, maybe they just got really creative with it after a while, but I've seen a lot of really offensive things, but, okay, so he, yeah, he writes too much propaganda, which he, um, yeah, he spaced out and misspelled, but, okay, and not enough comedy, and then he says, too woke, to political, to Disney. Really? Dis Disney. I don't know, I guess maybe that is, is... Is that what people think of when they think of Disney now? That, like, it's... No, he's, he already said woke. So, like, I don't... What what part of this is Disney? Is it the... The, the scene where two 17-year-olds, like, try to figure out whether or not to perform a blowjob on a complete stranger clearly older than them for a drug is that is that the disney part a again just conservatives please you look ridiculous this is not how you use language you can't just decide that words suddenly mean like yeah um, then he says, you know, full of feminist, which is also, he also split up that word, leftist ideologies. And then he claims that the movie focused more, I appreciate, he does say, I think this movie focused more on the director pushing her narrative instead of a well-written comedy. And even he has to admit, the actors did a pretty good job. Uh, let's see, a lot of the dialogue seems forced, again, going back to the director's narrative, it took away from the few funny moments the film actually did have. So, I thought all of the movie was incredibly funny, and, yeah, like, there is, there, there are, you know, there's there's commentary, there's, there's there are themes, it's saying something, but it's making jokes out of it, so... I don't know what, you know, yeah, I, I guess he didn't find it funny, but I would definitely say, like, honestly, if you find it distracting, I think that says more about you than the movie. I'm, um, again, you know, apparently Velma, the, the, you know, apparently that is not funny. It's just saying, you know, it's, it's just, you know, yeah. So, so I'm not saying that it never happens. But this, like, it always made it a joke. It never just had a character say something that wasn't funny, but was, like, communicating. Like, the, ki the, the times that they said things that communicated values, it was either funny or dramatic. Oh, maybe that's what he means. Or maybe I'm giving him too much credit. Anyway, but yeah, the... the and and this this next one is fascinating to me. So this person gave it a one out of ten, which considering what he writes is fair enough. One of the worst movies I have ever watched. This movie is borderline unwatchable. I had to take week long breaks during my viewing because I physically could not stomach the whole thing in one sitting. The studio actors, directors, and everyone involved. There's only one director anyway. Everyone involved should be ashamed of the final product. Five years have been taken off my lifespan, and it's all thanks to this garbage. Now, the... The, um... I'm, uh, just gonna real quick... Yeah, yeah, that was, a that was, a that was an IMDb user review. Um... It's number three from the bottom. I've, I had them placed based on the, the how many people voted positive. Two people out of 14 found it helpful, which is another way of saying 12 people downvoted that review. I'd like to note that this is, this is a case where the, the voting on, on, you know, if you vote for someone else's review, for someone else's user review on IMDb, it asks 
was this review helpful? I don't think that was very helpful to, to pretty much anyone other than, I guess, himself. Um, I, I, again, like, I, I kind of want to know, like, what even, does he not watch raunchy movies? Because this, like, dude, I, there are, there are some that are way worse than this, uh, you know, um, does he, yeah, I, I legitimately, I, I kind of want to know, like, if, if, um, again, if you're watching this video, I, I don't, I'm not expecting the guy who wrote the review to be, but if someone else, if, if you think you know what he means, like, week-long breaks, I'm also kind of fascinated, he did keep watching, though, he, he said that five years have been taken off his lifespan, like, does that, like, he said, week, week-long breaks, does, did it take him five weeks to watch the entire thing, and in, like, every week, you could feel like, oh, well, I guess, yeah, that's, Pulse is definitely moving slower, and, uh, oh, yeah, <clears throat> that was, that, one of my organs isn't working the way it should, I guess that's one year off my life, and by the end of the, and, and he, even after four weeks, I was like, I guess that's four years off my life. You know what? I, I, I'm committed at this point. Like, just, he's probably exaggerating. Certainly, I, I, I do not know how you would, how you would gauge that five years have been taken off your, your lifespan. Um, I, I just, I, I, he wrote... 56 words and he said nothing about the movie other than that he didn't like it like borderline unwatchable okay my man try to watch a UA Bowl movie that's unwatchable and like yeah phys physically could not stomach like I guess he didn't watch any like raunch comedy that came out in the 80s, or honestly, a lot of the 90s, or any horror movie from the 80s, like, this is, this is nothing compared to, like, yeah, um, but that was, that was fascinating, like, I, I read that, you know, and it actually isn't the, the, the very bottom, like, below that, one person gave it a 4 out of 10, said, did not laugh once, the trailer nailed it, though. Oh, okay. I just barely qualifies as a review, I guess. And then one guy that got two down votes and zero up votes. Yeah, saying, you know, yeah, one of the people saying, is there not another pharmacy close by? But yeah, so, um,. If you watch this whole way, honestly, pat yourself on the back. You have my thanks. I really appreciate it. Uh, I hope this move, this video, was as entertaining as I found the movie. Um, yeah, you know what? It's it's fair if like you you looked at how long this video is and was like, you know, I could I could actually watch the movie itself, like. At least two times, almost three times, in the time that that would also I would I would one hundred percent understand that. Um, I did not for this video to get so fucking long, but yeah, I I had a lot to say. What can I what can I say? So I have already suggested some things that you could maybe comment. Um, yeah, if you if none of those you know really got you typing. Let me know what is your favorite raunchy teen sex comedy, and yeah, the the you know yeah what was your favorite? What's your favorite joke? What's your favorite character? 
favorite scene. If you like this video, please thumbs up, subscribe, hit that little bell. There should be a link to my main channel page, one or two more links to stuff like relevant playlists, a suggested video if you watch on the screen right about now. I put out one vlog per week reviewing and sharing spoiler thoughts on a movie and one talking about my spoiler thoughts on the most recent episode of the current Disney Plus live action Star Wars show, which these days is The Mandalorian Season 3. And I've done reviews on a lot of Star Wars, you know, a couple of the games, all of the movies, you know, yeah, some of some of the shows, including some animated stuff. I'm I'm working my way through it, so you know, go to my channel and just you know the the yeah, there's a there's a entire playlist specifically for my Star Wars vlogs. And recently, the reviewing thoughts videos tend to come out very similar to this one. In other words, if more videos like this, you're in luck. You can check out my back catalogs. So let's catch my next week. I hope you enjoyed watching, as I enjoyed watching and recording. And I will catch you next time.